I'll gladly pay you by the hour for a minute or so, so you can sign off on the towers where they'll piss on your home. And if you feel like you're just powerless to answer them, no, it's cause you are. They'll gladly pay you by the hour for a minute or so, so you can sign off on the towers where they'll piss on your home. And if you feel like you're just powerless to answer them, no, it's cause you are, it's cause you are, they'll gladly stagnate a living wage, snap the chains, bury it. Labor slaves in rusty cages dragged behind a chariot Led by Mr. Racial Jungle, Joseph R. Iscariot Fighting over scraps as they barrage us all with variants And BuzzFeed clickbait straight until we're paralyzed Trying to distract us from the concentration camps That Joe had swore he'd close but only chose to amplify Where they got fifty-something kids in cages made for five to occupy and no, she hasn't seen the camps, but Harris swears they're paradise. She tells us the facilities are safe, and that right down to the women, they are regularly sterilized. Then she throws her head back, and she proceeds to laugh that sort of heartless cackle you'd expect from someone working steadfastly on behalf of the virus and a congress full of parasites. And where was I? I was busy cashing every blue check, demonstrating plainly all the narratives expected from the verified. I was busy breeding verbal leeches by the terabyte. Train them to exsanguinate the wealthy while they sleep at night. Bleed the oil barons dry and barren, say they showed us how to share and now we share alike. Tell them I contracted rabies from a feral mic. Now I'm just another species losing sleep to noise pollution in these glaring lights. Forced to change its habits and adapt to just survive. But now it's safe to say that some of us are thriving in the moment, throwing shit on presidential homes beneath the Paris skies. So if you feel like you're just powerless, I guess you bought the lie. But I can tell they're petrified of our collective might. Cause I can hear those gentrifiers weeping at the sight of our collective rights. And I only can imagine the intensifying fear of knowing revolution's near. And all that's left to do is simply wallow in the thick anticipation of a rabbit bite. And baby, one day you can ask your leaders just what that was like before you grab a slice. <laughs> so if you think you're powerless, allow me now to change your mind. Honey, if you think you're powerless, allow me now to change your mind. See, they'll pay you hourly, tax the meat you part. Build a shining tower out of loopholes and cards And tell you that you're powerless to keep you in the dark Because you aren't, because we aren't You see they'll pay you hourly, tax the meat you part And make you build a shining tower out of loopholes and cards Where they'll tell you that you're powerless to keep you in the dark Because you aren't, because we aren't Although he's not the slickest vulture to have ever picked a carcass, he's just the kind to catch us at our darkest for an easy harvest. Just the kind to serve us to the markets and see you lose your home before his donors let him bargain. Who give a cop the go ahead to shoot you in the leg before they let you harm a target. And being an American, I love watching garbage, but it's overload. And this is not my first rodeo. I don't drop mics, but I choke slam podiums. And so we go, little bit of Troy, a little Roanoke. And hold me close, tell me how you told me so I'm overboard, blowing out, I'm holy ghost and stolen shroud Soaked in old petroleum and calling down the rolling clouds 
slowly move my mouth and form the only sound I knew and it was always out of tune but it's the ugly fucking truth and now it's flowing out break the banks flood the basin I transcribed a translation spoke it out of Morse code and straight into capsaicin and god I hope it suits your station cause it's my last release that won't require proof of vaccination I got all my rates adjusted for infection and inflation bloating and decay and all the perks of radiation we see the virus for the profits, not the patients. Honey, look at all these records set for all the corporations. When COVID started spreading, they were just a side of celebration. They got one record quarter in the bag and now they're all impatient. They'd rather have a toe to tag than see a mouth to feed or worse, a kid in need of education. And honey, only money's making that distinction. They're gonna thin the herd straight through starvation to the brink of our extinction. Capitalism favors innovation and is never at a loss for ways to make us hate our liberation. Cloud our vision. Somewhere in America, a man with no money in the bank is on his way to City Hall to go complain about proposals for a soup kitchen. And he'll never see the tiny bit of irony that floats in all the tragedy of his position. And he's not the only one, it's an American tradition. So it goes, in endless perpetuity, we never deviated from the mission. I set out the ritual and listened from the sand, held my head between my hands and muttered, dying would be easy, life's an everyday decision. And I'm not the only one, it's an American tradition. I'm not the only one, it's an American tradition. <laughs> Bet you thought that Trump would go to jail and Joe would listen. You're not the only one that's an American tradition. I bet you thought that Trump would go to jail and Joe would listen. I guess this isn't such an awful place. Is that what you want me to say? You prove it's possible to sleep for days And to still think you're right here awake The cost of living isn't much to make But God, it's so hard to save And when they told you everything was safe Were you safe? growth who has come here to vie for your vote come here to cry at the camps and to mourn at the shore for the bodies that float by the wreck of an immigrant boat then it's back to their luxury home couple security booths and a moat couple cigars little escargot little booze and a soak just breathe in the steam and the smoke pink salt lavender candles are low shit when you do what you do gotta lighten the load and he got a life of his own that's a sight to behold and it's a lot to control to decipher the code or to siphon the soul. The cost of a good night's sleep for the working elite is a bargain no matter the toll. Mm -hmm. Worth any wager and that comes straight from the mouth of the means to the goal that will swallow us whole. 
ripe for the picking if you don't mind mold and you know i don't maybe we're pleasantly prone maybe we're taking a licking compliantly ticking and ticking and ticking but never explode no, I don't deliver the prettiest image, but damn if it isn't an accurate vision of natural vision, of rage at the system and abject heartbreak, patiently waiting for any who will listen. That little blue bird who was watching your words is a federal carrier pigeon, a Langley first. It's a patient observer who hears what it wants and is trained for the worst. Oh, you got nothing to hide. They'll be the ones to decide that after they root through your purse, after they read all your texts, after they raid your apartment, confiscate all of its contents, then conjure up evidence out of the air on a wing and a prayer and malicious intelligence nonsense. Any presumption of innocence long since gone, right along with your comforts and constants. Historically first, they will come for the communists. <laughs> so why in the fuck would I say I'm a communist? Well, it might be I love my community more than the monsters of opulence who are holding us hostage, who are vomiting promises. Might be I'm all done seeing our pensions and benefits harvested. Might be I'm all done watching the populace being disarmed in the guise of an armistice. Watching a woman collapse on the floor who will rise no more. She is wheeled out the door and you're next in line for the pharmacist. If you can get me to vote, it's a hard no confidence. But part of the charm of deception is politics wearing the mask of incompetence. It's all in the art of austerity, darling. It's all in the slide of the providence. Until home is as wide as your cubicle height and is only as deep as your coffin is. Maybe I'm miles away from impatience, aching to break off the head of the snake where the capital lust, reptile brain, and the margin of profit is. Like off with his. Like off with his. I guess this isn't such an awful place Is that what you want me to say? You prove it's possible to sleep for days And to still think you're right here awake The cost of living isn't much to make But God, it's so hard to save And when they told you everything was safe Were you safe? Indie. What's up, Indie? Indie News Network. Indie. I get news from 
from Independent Left. Independent Left dot News. Independent Left dot News. Indie Left Media. Independent Left News. Indie Left. Independent Left News. Independent Left Media. Indie Media. Indie Left. Indie. 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 Indie Left News. Indie Left. Hi, Indie. Indie Left News. Subscribe to Indie News Network. We're world building. Your your way of assisting, I feel like, is really cool. Independent Left News. Independent Left News. I'm a huge fan. He created INN. The founder of uh, Independent News Network. Indie is the founder of Indie News Network. Thank you, Independent Left News. A huge thank you and shout out to Indie Left. Everyone, check out Indie Left News. Hey, Indie Left. Independent Left News. Indie. Indie. Hi, Indie. Indie Left. Indie Left News. Indie News. Independent Media. Independent Left News has done an amazing job. We're back and we did it and oh, we did it one. Shit. Here we go again. Oh, dude. All right. All right. Mr. Sound Effect. Okay. So, like, Reef has got this thing now. Like, yep. yeah, he's he's now got a big soundboard and it's, yeah. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> it, we, we did it again. So, we're here. It's Sunday night and it's, it's episode, holy shit, 71. 71 episodes now of How Do We Miss That? So, thank you, everybody, for, like listening and uh, we keep doing this if nobody was watching but i'm glad everybody does and the people who do and listen and really appreciate you and uh yeah we got some some good stuff lined up for you this week um last week i was on misty's radio show was that last week or was that that was a week before actually uh what were we doing this week i don't even know just head down every day doing Substacks. doing i did a new yep. indie tech tips that was out new this week um, Gordon Dimack, I helped him out with some stuff. We've got a bunch of people in chat already. This is awesome. So let's get to it. Um, welcome, everybody. How do we miss that? So we're a podcast and live stream featuring articles written by independent journalists who expose corruption, cover the labor movement, and challenge establishment narratives and talking points. New episodes stream like now, Sunday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, on our YouTube, Rumble, Twitch, Rockfin, Substack, Facebook, Telegram channels, even hosted on IndieLeft.News itself. And the podcast is usually published within a day or two. I'm Indy. I'm co-host. I'm founder and editor of IndieLeft.News and IndieMedia.Today Substack. I got this guy sitting next to me. He's Reef Breland. He is INN's technical director, creator of INN News and Reefer After Dark when it runs once in a while on the Indie News Network. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> IndieNews.Network, we're both co-founders. That's a collaborative family of independent content creators. Go and check out IndieNews.network, and you can find all of the amazing folks out there. And I'll tell you, just today, Big Bad Crab and Colin were streaming earlier. Angel streamed after midnight last night, so technically that was today. I saw Lucy, Blue Moon Red Wine, she was streaming today. We've got we've got our channel streaming today. Tar is going to be going live probably in the next week or so. We we're just listening to Jesse. Just, uh, you know, so many of our members already just participating today. So go and subscribe to all those amazing channels and support all of our, all these incredible content creators. Um, so the story that we that we include today and that we're going to talk about tonight were included in IndieLeft.News between Sunday and Friday. Man, there's so many stories every day, like over 100 in that newsletter. And I'm just pulling out a, a couple throughout the week. And pretty big stories that I didn't really see talked about anywhere else. Of course, one that we did, but not enough. Ah, oh, awesome, Boomer. Thank you so much for the $2 Super Chat. Please make sure to share the, li- share Aww, the link. Oz. Like the stream. Subscribe to our channel on all the platforms where you watch and listen. We are everywhere. So, um, yeah, we it's 10.05. That's good timing. All right, so let's go from the two-shot. That's where we're at. We could do the alternate. Hey, look at that. So we got chat up. Everybody's here. This is our thumbnail for tonight. Uh, Reef is getting bong cam set up better. Uh, again, always props to Big Mad Crab, creative director over at INN for helping out and getting that thumbnail taken care of for us. Uh, doing the design on the logo for how do we miss that actually for the show. But we've got a few stories. We're going to talk about East Palestine and what's going on there. Just at a really high level. I mean, there's so much in-depth. And there are so many great um, independent journalists that are on site that I would much rather you go talk to, you know, go go watch and listen to. Uh, I have a few that we're going to we're gonna read up on and get us like kind of high level where, we're, where we should be. 
Margaret Kimberly over at Black Agenda Report wrote a great article about COINTELPRO. We've got reporting from Sludge about congressional corruption. And then we're going to talk about unplugging from corporate media and exactly why and what's going on with that. And Project Centered's got something. And then I wrote something. So we're going to go through all, some of that, too. Uh, all right. Bring yep. it. All right. Let's 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 bring it. Um, East Palestine. Uh, oh, no, wait. Welcome to hell because the ground is poisoned and... Wow. Julia Conley over at Common Dreams. Common Dreams is an Indie Media Award honoree. Come on, hit the button. I know. Uh, dun, 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 or whatever. Oh, it's all the way. That's all the way up at the top. We gotta, you gotta, you gotta prepare me. Uh, uh, where's it at? Uh... <laughs> all right, we'll have to fix this in post. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have to fix that in post. <laughs> I got it. All right. So, yeah, get our grandkids remember. out. Do it, do it again. Julia Conley <laughs> over at Common Dreams. She's an incredible Common Dreams is an indie media award honoree. They're an incredible publication. So support them for sure. Um, get See? our grandkids out. East Palestine That's the residents. Take. Are, yeah, thank you. East Palestine residents are erupting at Norfolk <laughs> Southern. <laughs> Very smooth. Every day that this community doesn't have a relocation all right. options, all right, is another day that this community is in crisis. And Julia writes up a very high level. These people are being poisoned. The train, the, the rail companies are really basically offering them very little to nothing at this point. This was on Monday already. This was um, or nine days ago. So a few things happened throughout the week. So we'll we'll go back and we'll we'll take a couple of of, of highlights throughout the week of what happened to these people. In real time, like, can you imagine living there and having been put through this ringer? So first, it's every day the community doesn't have relocation options is another day we're in crisis. And they don't. So what's happening? Around 200 residents directly confronted Norfolk Southern Rep on Thursday, right? That was on March 3rd, but prior to March 3rd, voicing their anger and concern that they'll continue to get sicker because of the toxic chemicals. No one's coming to save us, right? That's a, a CBS morning news report. I don't want to go through that. I don't want to click on it because we'll definitely get dinged. I know they pulled down Crab Stream yesterday. Ahead of the Thursday meeting, yep. EPA also ordered testing in East Palestine for dioxins. And I want to give a big, big shout out to Last American Vagabond, Ryan Christian, who's been talking heavily about dioxins for weeks, weeks before. And as well as Aaron Brockovich and Addy Adds and Jeremy Lafredo. And there, there are other reporters that yep, have all been else. on the ground. Um, there, there have been others, but not very many. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Those who will not be named. <laughs> yes, people who will not be named. Um, but ahead of the EPA, you they know. did release a list. The RVO, which is the River Valley Organizing, which is a local grassroots organization, said public pressure from locals pushed officials to even conduct the testing on dioxins. So here's the RVO, the, their list of five demands from East Palestine residents that were agreed upon at another community meeting, including relocation for anyone who wants it, independent environment testing, ongoing medical testing and monitoring, safe disposal of toxic waste, and payment by Norfolk Southern for 100% of the cost of cleanup, which I think the governor even then came out later on in the week and said that that's that, he wanted to impose that as well. Bob Kiss. Three days later, okay. Julia Conley's doing another follow-up story. And I there's a much larger story there. Go to the go to Common Dreams and read the article. The I will put the link in the description after the show. I usually I, I almost always do that. Uh, or I try to. Something needs to be turned off and muted. Okay. So this one is we're gonna keep pushing till the community gets the help it's owed. Right, the organizers are still getting angry. Yeah, this is not enough. The limited relocation plan, what are they talking about? Well, here's here's the tweet from River Valley Organizing. Another win. Norf Norfolk Southern has yep. caved to community demands and will pay for relocation for residents. Until the 6th, they didn't want to pay for any relocation. That's amazing. But what they're saying is one mile, within one mile of the, of the derailment, they'll pay for relocation. For how long? <laughs> You're about to find out. I think it was four days. Okay. It's not like permanent relocation because their ground is poison. It's like four days. Like that's going to do anything. But I said, hold up. Wait a minute. Something ain't right.
right? So United for East Palestine, United at United for EP. Give them a follow and a shout out on on Twitter as well. Their team worked with the whole Welton group and they conducted an informal survey of residents living near the derailment sites at different distances. A hundred total surveyed. And the questions asked were, have you experienced physical symptoms and have you smelled chemicals in 24 hours? And it's, it's ugly. I mean, it's real ugly. <clears throat> so yep. what, what are we going to do? You know, what are we doing to help these people? Not much is the sad part. Um, so, yep. well, here's what their long-term plan is, is a safety plan that includes automation, oh, which can automate. F- further endanger workers. Oh, of right. Course. Okay, so this is an article coming out later on in the week, two more, two days further. Well, what are we going to do to make sure that this doesn't happen in the future? Well, well, you can't just replace a manpower with a machine when it's always not always as effective. That's true, number one. Number two, you need people on the trains. They have to be monitoring this stuff. So with Norfolk Southern involved in numerous significant trail, train derailments and other accidents in recent weeks, they unveiled on Monday a six-point safety plan that officials claimed would immediately enhance the safety of its operations. Okay. But critics, including rail workers, were quick to point out that one aspect could worsen the growing problem of reduced railroad crews, which they say has contributed to dangerous conditions on railroads. Yes. So as they reported last month, RWU has called for comprehensive legislation and robust action from regulators to keep rail workers and communities safe, warning that rail workers and rail companies, including Norfolk Southern, have been lobbying for years federal approval to reduce train crews and loosen safety protocols. We've been talking about this precision a scheduled rail railroading or PSR. Um, that's one of the things they've been right. and even even you know I was I was talking to my dad about this yesterday and he didn't really know anything about PSR and what they were doing and the fact that trail that these rail guys only get like 33 days off a year and no paid sick days on top of it. Um yeah they get federal right. holidays etc but the way that this PSR works is that they're on shift effectively for like five days at a time and they're, and then they're on call. It's insane. Um, and there are fewer and fewer of them. And I'm like, I don't even know why you would go work there unless you're in a town that's absolutely stuck where, where you, there's no other job available. And that's really the best thing that you could take. But it's, it's, it's not a life that's glamorous that people want to necessarily sign up for, but somebody has got to do it. I, I, I give him a lot of credit, yep. a lot of respect. Uh, it's it, I'm not I'm not looking down on it at all. It's just not for me personally. I can't I, I don't knowing that that's going to be the life that you have that you're going to be abused that you're going to be a union member, but that you're not going to be treated well, that you're not going to be appreciated, and that you're not going that your well, time mostly will never be your own. Why, why would you sign up? Like I don't know because they're stuck. Well. Um- the other thing that happened this week, which I don't know if you have in here or not, is that, you know, the, the CEO of Norfolk Southern had, you know, got a slap on the wrist from Bunny Sanders. Yeah, we got that. Um, That's coming. Who who said, like, four days, like, he, he brought it down to four days. What was their original offer for, like... Fifteen? Six days? They wanted like, fifteen. Right. They wanted fifteen. Right. So he was like, you better give them four days, even though they asked for 15. <laughs> Unreal. Where it's going to be huge. Like, right. huge. Ridiculous. So, over 50% of the accidents that happened from 2016 to 21 don't even have the ability to be found by the technology that they're looking to use. I mean, it, and that's someone who's a director of safety for the union. Mm-hmm. Right. So in recent days, rail unions have denounced an attempt by, by Norfolk Southern to use workers' demands for paid sick leave against them, offering BMWED members four days of sick leave, like you just said, in exchange for the union support for its automated inspection program. That's gross. Weaver yeah. argued that strong, comprehensive railroad safety legislation is needed to compel railroad companies to keep workers and communities safe. <laughs> RWU has expressed support for some aspects of the Bipartisan Railway Safety We're- Act of 2020, except, no, no, wait no, a minute. No, 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 didn't they also say that they want to nationalize the rails? Like the RWU is now calling for nationalize the rails. Yes. All right, because of all back, this back up. Go ahead. 
back yes. up. Yeah. They're they're so they're offering the union members four days. your sick leave days, but only four of them. Mm -hmm. Which is of course what Bernie is trying to push the CEO guy to do, right? So they're like, yeah, 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 we'll give you that if you let us replace your job with robots. Yep, that's or half your jobs. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, that's what's going on. Welcome to America. Fucking dystopia, like I said. Yep. Okay, so welcome to our rails. Welcome to the situation. We need to national. Yeah, but you know what? Even if we nationalize it, so we're gonna put some kind of a uh, of a government committee or a government appointee who's then gonna go work for the rail lobbying administration. You know, rail lobbying industry. The minute that he leaves the administration uh -huh. and does exactly what the rail companies want anyway, like that's why we need to ra to, to nationalize the whole damn thing. Um, we need to get rid of the private companies. I'm sorry, yep. Warren Buffett, but, but, you know, CSX and Norfolk Southern and Union Pacific and, and all of them, like, you know, they all need to be, you know, that, that is one of the lifebloods and the fact that we've allowed it to be privatized for profit and, and we've essentially been held hostage by these companies because they've, done massive stock buy buy, stock buybacks they have not invested in upgrading the rails and in upgrade in, in maintaining the equipment because in a lot of cases that's the town's responsibility and the towns are broke or being starved by the federal government as well they've got other priorities and it's a, it's a mess you know who's who's it should be a nationalized system where the same company that is responsible for the trains is responsible for the rails that are underneath it. And I think that in a lot of cases, that is not the case. Um, so, um, again, these guys are arguing that uh, support for some aspects of the, of the bipartisan act that was introduced last week, but warn that loopholes will allow companies to avoid the scope of the law without violating the law and ultimately use the, the legislation to reduce staff. That's exactly what we're saying. Like, that's exactly what they're going to end. Like you said, then they haul this clown, Alan Shaw, Norfolk Southern CEO, refuses to commit to even giving workers seven paid sick days, halting stock buy or seven. halting stock buy. Right. And he won't even say that we won't, we won't even stop yep. stock buybacks. We'll just continue to make massive profits and can, and artificially inflate the price of our existing stock by taking some off the marketplace and putting it back into our war chest with the profits that we've made. Wow. And he'll just sit there and do it because you know what? There's no repercussions. So Alan Shaw also wouldn't agree to end precision scheduled railroading, which is a Wall Street led profit maximizing approach that critics say endangers communities nationwide. Huh. I, I think I just talked about something like that. Yeah. Kenny Stansel, Common Dreams, another Common Dreams, Indie Media Award honoree. Come on. God. Slipping. Dude, I, I even put it on a thing now. I don't know. I'm so disappointed. So I can just I think what? I'm gonna I think I may need it here. Um, so Shaw. Sure. <laughs> so our, our CEO, Alan Shaw, refused to commit to providing workers with seven days of paid paid sick leave, ceasing stock buybacks, and abandoning Wall Street endorsed policies, like we say, that contribute to the fifteen hundred plus derailments seen each year in the US including Norfolk Southern's toxic crash near the Ohio-Pennsylvania border last month, as well as the derailment that happened in Alabama just before the multi-millionaire executive test fight, literally hours before. It was unbelievable. In remarks right. prepared for a Senate committee uh, on environment and public works, of course, he didn't write that. His lawyers wrote that. I'm deeply sorry for the impact this derailment has had on the people of East Palestine and the surrounding communities, and I am determined to make mm -hmm. it right. Uh-huh. Sure you are. But during the committee's hearing, he refused to use the multiple opportunities he was given to publicly commit to enacting any meaningful changes whatsoever. Of course. Follow, of course. Oh, no, I don't want that. So following the, he the hearing on Capitol Hill, Food and Water Watch director Winona Howder, she's, she's a fun one, said in a statement that Shaw's apology today rings hollow. Thank you. Coming as it did after years spent pushing to roll back the very sorts of safety regulations that would have prevented an accident like this. Like I said, I was talking to my father about this and immediately 
the Trump administration is the reason why this happened. I said, how long has Joe, Joe Biden been president now? Like, they got a transportation se secretary who was handed that job as a gift for bowing out of the race when he did. It was supposed to be a cush job, a, a, a placeholder job, until he got his next job. And man, did he take over at a terrible time. In the year and a half since Mayo Pete has been transportation secretary, you've seen a port crisis where the, where the ships were backed up at port. You've seen an airline crisis where people were stranded in the airport at Christmas. And now you're seeing this, this monster ridiculousness going on with the rails. And they have oversight over all of it. And they choose not to use it because they're also being their buddy-buddy with the unions. They're buddy-buddy with the rail companies. They're buddy-buddy with the hedge funds that own the rail companies. Oh, yeah, those are owned by, in one case, I believe it's BlackRock. In one case, it's Vanguard. In one case, it's, it's Warren Buffett. It's, it's all of the richest of the rich own the rails in the United States. So, And a couple of them are publicly traded companies, but who are the largest controlling interest shareholders? So Mayo Pete is... Partially to blame here, but he's not, he's just, he's part of the system. He's, he's part of the problem. He's not the problem. And I'm not necessarily blaming him. I'm saying that he certainly as transportation secretary has authority to put fines in place, to fine Norfolk Southern for every day that they're not on site doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing to do the cleanup and to the EPA standards and the EPA, you know, I don't know where they're at with this. I know that, Aaron Brockovich, and there are other people that are putting together independent testing uh, um, lab that, that are recommending independent testing labs, and we've talked about that. Um, there's nobody coming to save us but us. So if you see, smell, or taste something funny, you say something and and speak up because mm -hmm. there's they're going to first deny it because liability wise, that's what insurance. You know, it's telling them and the whole country is basically set up that way now. So right. like we said, Thursday's hearing comes two days after NTSB, which is already probing the cause of the East Palestine disaster, announced a special investigation into Norfolk Southern's organization and safety culture. Well, that's a good thing. All right. Um, we're going to stay tuned on this. Like I said, Last American Vagabond has done incredible work. He had an interview just today with somebody who's forming, who's suing the EPA. Um, hey, check this out. We did a new Indies Tech Tips. Go over to rumble.com and look up Indies Tech Tips and did a new one today about something about Substack. So you can get yourself a notebook. We got merch. We got t-shirts. We got tankies. We got, uh, we got knit hats. So we're going to, we're going to get back to that next one. That's, I love that little thumbnail. That's hilarious, Greg. Thank you. All right. Cool. Oh, all right. We got a bunch of people hanging out. I love it. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. All right. I pulled a Jesse. Hi, everybody. Badly. Terrible. Hi, everybody. So, um, Eric T. Red, what up? Ooh, Mastermind, Angel. Oh, wow, a lot of people hanging out at INN all day today. I love it. Rick Solis, Bad Cookies, how are you? Good to see you. Gamer, hey, hey, hey. Karen. Aaron loves the Oscars. Sorry, I'm not an Oscars fan, so therefore we're the anti-Oscars. We are going to be talking about everything but celebrities and nonsense. And Well, we're going to talk about corruption, and we're going to talk about what our <clears throat> leaders have been up to. Water. And, and, and no, we're not going to talk any more about water. We're done with talking about water. <laughs> East Palestine has enough water. tainted and poisoned water. I wish that something happened to some of the water here. Water. Uh oh, what happened? What did I do? Oh no. There we go. We hey, look it. at that. Did I do that whole thing last time? Son of a. Anyway. All right. Corruption is going mainstream. Mm. Ah. What is like this? Like it wasn't already? Well, that's. Thanks, Greg. Yes, Greg is. Greg, Greg helped us be Captain Obvious today. So mm -hmm. congressional leaders are embracing dark money like never before, right? So this is David Moore at Sludge. I like him a lot. Three of the four super PACs aligned with House and Senate leaders brought in the brought in record amounts from their dark money affiliates in the midterms. Yeah, except 
how dark money are they if they know who they are? But so I just grabbed a couple of paragraphs, a couple of snippets from this one. Um, in his first interview with after the collapse of FTX, right? We know SBF made the surprising admission that he had donated as much to Republicans to Democrats, but as he put it, all my Republican donations were dark. Hmm. How convenient. He hasn't mm. volunteered more details, but it's likely that he made his donations to one of the dark money nonprofits that are affiliated with super PACs aligned with Republican Party leaders in the House and Senate. Um, the now indicted mogul said that he may have secretly been the second or third biggest Republican donor in the midterms as well as one of the largest Democratic. Ooh. Yeah. Donors are increasingly steering their political giving along these secretive paths, as we know. Thank you to Robbie Yeager as well. He's one of the best at investigative and following it, finding the money. The four super PACs aligned with the... With Wait, was he the uh, Indie Media Award winner, Robbie Yeager? He, he is an Indie Media Award honoree. <laughs> <laughs> sludge, uh. sludge, sludge may be one in the future, but they are right now. Um, the four super PACs, like I said, aligned with congressional mm -hmm. leaders, received more in contributions than ever last election cycle from their largest dark money affiliates, according to a sludge review of FEC data. Well, what's he talking about? The four super PACs endorsed by congressional leaders, though technically independent from them, have come to dominate spending on congressional elections in recent years, spending far more than national party committees like the NRCC or the DCCC to help elect their party's candidates. In the 2022 cycle, these super PACs became the four highest spending outside groups on federal races, according to Open Secrets. They each received large contributions from affiliated yep. 501c4 organization that does not publicly disclose its donors. For example, the top donor group to Kevin McCarthy's uh, Congressional Leadership Fund is the nonprofit American Action Network, and the president of both the CLF and the American Action Network since just after the 2018 midterms has been Republican strategist Dan Constan. These nonprofits offer a legal channel for wealthy individuals, businesses, or other organizations to secretly funnel unlimited amounts of money to PACs benefiting House or Senate leaders who can control which bills come to the floor or appoint political, a powerful committee chairs. Yes, that actually is happening. Corruption right in front of you nakedly. Mm -hmm. Oh, money funneled I mean, through... It's funner if it's it, nakedly, at least. Well... Not if it's happening to us. Not yeah. not without some type of, you know, <laughs> yeah. take me to dinner first, seriously. Like, right, at least. Nothing. You know? Money funneled through corporate entities and other types of entities are not subject to the same types of disclosure rules that federal committees have to, uh, have to comply with are often the preferred vehicles for those spending huge amounts of campaign money, but those who don't want people to know they're the ones spending it, said Aaron Schoplock. And she's a director of campaign finance at Nonpartisan Campaign Legal Center. So a nonpartisan think tank isn't necessarily a nonprofit either, by the way. Um, and, you know, and not for a whole mm -hmm. bunch of money themselves. But due to campaign finance laws governing outside spending groups, the super PACs are not formally linked to, to members of Congress. Right. But campaign finance watchdogs point out how closely super PACs are tied to, their, to party leaders like McCarthy. Shocking. In January, as part of the negotiations from Marth McCarthy to corral the votes from his caucus to be House Speaker, their version of force the vote, the ostensibly independent CLF struck a deal with another outside major spending group, Club for Growth, not to spend on primaries in safe GOP districts. That's bad. That's mm -hmm. like, you know, we don't see any reason to fight with each other and expend our resources. You know, this is the, that, that, that's bad for people that are against what they're trying to accomplish, which we are. So on the Republican side, the four dark money affiliates, like we said, with the American Action Network and One Nation. And on the Democratic side, House Majority Forward and Majority Forward. They made contributions worth a combined $209 million to the four major congressional leader-aligned super PACs in 2022 cycle. 
according to review of FEC data. That's a more than 19% increase on the amount of groups contributed in 2020 to those same super PACs. Sure. This is fine. This the vast is fine. Yeah. The vast majority of contributions were monetary, of course, but these sums also include contributions described in FEC records as in-kind services of research, data, or development, as well as provisions of salary, office space, and health insurance. Hmm. Three of the four dark money groups in... It's a good movie. What? Office space. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Three of the four dark money groups increased their contributions <laughs> to <laughs> Congressional Leader Aligned Super PACs. God damn it. All right, so... <laughs> only one nation's total given to the Senate Leadership Fund declined to um, to increase their amounts to the uh, you know to the leadership fund from 2020. So three of the four, you know, again, 19 percent increase between the four. And here is what you're looking at. Okay, so look at this graph. There you go. You got to sing it. So, like we said, dark money groups, in addition to continuing to spend money on things like TV ads to influence voters, increasingly routing their contributions to super PACs, along with shell companies, nonprofits that don't disclose their, their donors, donated $612 million to federal groups in the midterms. So now we're up to over $820 million, somewhere around there. The resulting lack of public disclosure has caused some to refer to super PACs like CLF as gray money groups, where they are legally required to disclose their donors. Individuals or businesses that fund their top donors like AEN are allowed to remain a secret. How? Knowing who's behind these vast sums of money poured into political campaigns is crucial for voters to be able to make informed decisions or choices about who they want to represent them. <laughs> as if they have a choice. And we don't have that information available. No, we do not. Without it, voters can make informed decisions and are sometimes deceived, as we've been reading recently about, in the case of George Santos. How about in the case of Mitch McConnell? How about in the case of Chuck Schumer? How about in the case of Debbie Wasserman Schultz? How about in the case of literally every single person in Congress that takes money from corporations that doesn't necessarily advertise it they should be wearing patches on their uh, on their suits like nascar drivers i 100 percent subscribe to that it's a uniform wear it tell us where your money's coming from so what's happening of course we know that house republican dark money is soaring aan to clf contributions went by more than two-thirds to a total of more than 50 million dollars Again, that's nothing compared to the six hundred million. AN also spent more than thirty million dollars on digital TV ads. This is why our parents are scared out of their minds and completely propagandized. Thirty million dollars from Republican dark money ads. We don't have thirty million dollars to flood the airways with dark money ads that are promoting bullshit Republican talking points and nonsense fear mongering. Uh, and lies about Joe Biden being a socialist or a communist or controlled by the CCP. Would, come on. That's ridiculous. He's <coughs> He can barely get himself out of bed in the morning and string three sentences together. China. He, yeah. Oh, here we go. Now, now, now I open the door. Come on, man. <coughs> um, what? So. Come on, man. Right. Along with more donations from Republican billionaires like Ken Griffin, fossil fuel companies like Chevron, the CLF succeeded in helping to flip the control of the chamber. Yeah, that's what did it. It wasn't the it wasn't how bad the Democrats were in the last two years. It was the Republicans and all the money that they spent on ads. Uh huh. How about if the Democrats did something to retain the House? That might have helped too. By the way, we're out on Rumble. We're out, yep. we're on Rumble too. I know that they tell us we get a lot of views. Rafe always calls them fake views. They're fake views. Fake we views. Know, nobody chats over there. Nobody comments. So if you're over you there, say fake news. Thank you. They're not Rumble is not fake news, man. I'm, I'm telling you. 
All right. So, <laughs> so open. <clears throat> yeah. So two, 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 twenty-two to two twelve is, of course, with one vacancy. The CLS website says that it's endorsed by Kevin McCarthy. What a surprise! That's normal. That that, that House, yep. you know. House, lead, House majority leaders would would do that, right? Um, speakers. So, mm. she left, of the course. The Coke Network. I'm sorry, the Coke Network. Yeah, they received a million dollars, a mi- one million dollars, on October 27th of just this past year from a group called Building America's Future, listing an address in Alexandria, Virginia, that releases no information about itself. It links to the Coalition to Protect American Workers which is a conservative anti-tax group founded in 21 by Mark Short. Who's that? He's former chief of staff to Mike Pence. And that's to block the Biden administration's Mm. agenda. Hmm. How about that? Short, that's only a million dollars. In the grand scheme of 800 million, that's a drop in the bucket. But still, I would like a million dollars to to fund in INN. That would be be nice. not from these clowns. I wouldn't take it because there's strings attached and you have to play ball and do what they say. And we wouldn't do that. And that's not what we do here. But Short previously worked with Freedom Partners, which is a group in the right wing Coke network. Great. And his wife worked for the Coke Foundation. So this is a one big happy family. The AAN's contributions amounted to more than 19% of the $260 million that the CLF raised in 2022 cycle. That's just one of the groups, 200 million. And here's your House Democrats led by, we know this name, Robbie Mook, a longtime Democratic strategist who was Hillary Clinton's campaign manager in 2016. He was also executive director. And we also have executive director uh, who previously worked for the DCCC. These parasites, they keep coming up. I mean, you know, these, these, these staffers, these, I don't know, these hangers on that think that they want to influence policy. Why? Because they're controlled by some corporation and they're funded and they're inserted. And yeah, it's it's crony capitalism and it's capitalism and it's gross. But in last year's midterms, HMF picketed its donations. Yep, exactly. To HMP up to $10.2 million, a rise of more than 25%. So where did all this money come from? Hmm. I'm guessing it came from the government through the P, through, through you know, the the PPP loans and through all this COVID money. Group's executive director is Mike Smith. Who's that? He was a former Senate advisor for Nancy Pelosi in the DCCC. Huh, senior advisor. Hakeem Jeffries blessed the elevation of Smith, the president of the group, early this year, saying in a quote published on the HMP website that Smith, quote, will help ensure a smooth transition. Uh-huh. Sure. He, it will help a yep. transition for Hakeem to continue to reap Tons of financial benefits now that Nancy's going to be no longer speaker. Uh huh. The HMP brought in nearly $181.8 million in the 2022 cycle. Democrats are just as dirty as Republicans. They take just as much dark money as Republicans. Okay. They're all, it's all one big club and you ain't in it. But who got the most? For the dark money affiliate? Of course, it's the Senate Republicans and it's Mitch McConnell. The most evil of the most evil. Okay. How much? In a dip of about 12% compared with the previous cycle. Why? Because I believe Mitch was running in 2020. He's not this time. So he squeezed them for more money while he was running. Contributions from One Nation made up SLS top source of funding, right? And that's private equity CEO Stephen Schwartzman. He donates to both sides. Heard that name too, right? Yep. The SLF received... Other donations from groups whose funding is opaque, such as $3 million from the Chamber of Commerce, the business lobbying behemoth that doesn't publicly disclose its member companies or donors, but tons of people donate to the Chamber of Commerce. The SLF also received a million and a half from Conservative Americans PAC, a new super PAC funded by two dark money groups, the American Economic Freedom Alliance. Yeah, that's that's really vague. That's a little vague. And the American Prosperity Alliance. Who are all these people? Nobody knows. Come on. We... we who are these yep. people? Yeah. I got it somewhere. <laughs> I got it. It's it's here. The SLS president is Stephen Law, and he's been listed as the president and CEO of One Who are Nation. These people. And, yeah, thanks. In tax in tax filings, but Law bills himself as president and CEO of both groups in media appearances, as well as the CEO of the Super PAC American Crossroads, which spent 
almost six million dollars last cycle, virtually all of it opposing Democrats. Well, obviously because he's on the Republican side, but of the nearly two hundred and ninety million dollars the SLF raised last cycle, share from one nation, which marks the names and addresses of its contributors as restricted in tax forms, might makes up to close to 26%. That's all dark money. Nobody knows exactly who that is. Senate Democrats, okay. guess what? They get just as much. They're just as dirty as we said. There's no better. Here you got Chuck Schumer getting, raising yep. $337 million last cycle and majority forward share amounted to almost 22% of that, of that total. Completely dark. Um, right. So I'm not going to get into all this. It's it's super, yep. super wonky and gets into numbers. But majority forward, look, Democrats are just as guilty and just as dirty. We don't subscribe to voting for either party here. Um, vote independent, vote for local ballot measures, vote for local candidates. But at a federal level, these guys are taking so much money that you're 25, 30, 50, 100,000, 5,000 dollars is nothing. Three hundred and thirty-eight million dollars from one pack, and they got two of them for each side. What's your twenty bucks doing? Give it to your neighbor. Don't give it to these assholes. Don't. Just stop. Just stop. That's what she said. <laughs> Okay, of course, we're looking for transparency anywhere, but at the, at the state level, that's one of the things where we can affect change, right? Since 2010, Citizens United FEC opened the door to unlimited election spending. Nonprofits don't disclose their donors that have, have themselves spent more than a billion. However, the Disclose Act, a bill that, to require greater transparency, um, was reintroduced by Sheldon Whitehouse, and it was called an effort to and the corrupting and for this bullshit, that's not going to happen in actual Congress. But while Republicans in control of the House and strong and disclosure laws facing an uphill battle, <laughs> lately, right, that's, that's an understatement. Campaign finance reform advocates in states are taking the initiative to make the cash behind influence efforts in state and local contents more transparent. They can do that. Despite Citizens United, which is for federal elections. But at the state level, that's controlled by the state. So at the state level, perhaps the most exciting development has been the passage of Arizona's Prop 211 by a sweeping majority. So that's the Voters' Right to Know Act, which would require groups spending more than $50,000 in statewide campaigns or $25,000 on others to disclose the original funding source of all donations over $5,000 and above. It should be over $500 and above, personally, yeah. but that's okay. Yeah. yeah. In past in November with more than 72% of voters in favor. Because how many people really can afford to give more than $500 to a political campaign unless they're related to that person or they're looking for something out of that campaign? Other state measures are being tracked, okay, by the Campaign Legal Center. That includes an elections bill in Illinois. And then you've got another one in Oregon. And then you've got... Um, so it's encouraging, like, uh, you know, these are... That's been submitted to face state voters in 2024. I think that's a petition for, for a ballot measure. Honest elections fight political corruption and require disclosure and transparency. I love it. So don't want to, you know, that, that was a little long and a little, a little crazy, cray cray, but um, we're, we're, we're moving. We're, we're getting through it. Um, thanks for sticking with us here. We got a couple more. Um, yeah, what do we do about it? Agreed, Eric. Yeah, 11 demands is is a good start for proposed strategy, 100%, man. Um, and what do we do about it? Well, first, we have to purge the entire electoral system. Then we have to eliminate the machines and go back to hand-counted, hand-marked paper ballots so that we know that our elections are free, fair, and equal. Uh, we need some type of equal time reinstatement in our media so that you can't have these partisan hack networks that are running 24 seven that don't provide any type of an alternative perspective without grow up get serious. without some kind of, without the extreme bias that we're seeing right now. Um, you need a lot of things to happen and mostly it's going to have to be a complete system crash and I'm not rooting for it, but 
I don't see how in the current system it's going to actually succeed because they'll just crush it every time. They'll co-opt it, they'll smear it, they'll buy it off, or they'll just straight up, as Jane Fonda said, murder. That was Jane Fonda's words, not ours. Murder. Jane, Jane Fonda said that. I, I, I don't say that every day. I really don't. I swear. I swear, kids. Um, <clears throat> but we also need to be mindful of what's going on when it comes to COINTELPRO. So we're going to go back to the next story, and this is also something that we need to look out for, Eric. And a solution is to know how to watch our backs and know when infiltrations are happening and know who's trying to set, up, set us back, recognize it, and not allow us to distract us. So mm -hmm. Margaret Kimberly, an Indie Media Award honoree for Black Agenda Report, Wrote a really great article this week about how comrades, how comrades revealed the existence of COINTELPRO. So go subscribe to Black Gender Report. Great, great, great publication. Neil deGrasse Tyson. No, I don't think that that <laughs> is, but it, I don't either. It could be. I shockingly similar. No, but on March eighth, nineteen seventy one. <laughs> March eighth. Hey, I know, I know someone that that, that date's special to. A couple people that date's special to. Oh, birthday. that's what happened last week. Rich had a birthday. That's what it was. Holy shit! We're gonna have to show the Joe video. Yes, I did. I gotta cue that up. All right. So on March eighth, nineteen seventy one, before this motherfucker was ever born, a brave group of people mm -hmm. revealed the extent of FBI spying, harassment, and even the killings of U.S. citizens. More than fifty years later, we would do well to remember the significance of their actions. So this is on the anniversary of the COINTELPRO break-in and discovery. What? Yeah. So what happened? Kitty! Every field office was required to establish a racial squad, quote, <laughs> to coordinate coverage of what the Bureau labeled, quote, racial matters. Ghetto informers were a subset of the group the Bureau called racial informants. And that's from the burglary, the yeah, discovery of These all of sound like canceled Marvel movies. FBI. Oh my God. So, like we said, eight activists on Reef's birthday before he was born, 1971, broke into an FBI field office in Media, Pennsylvania, and removed every document they could find, calling themselves the Citizens Commission to investigate the FBI. They knew there was FBI infiltration and disruption of the anti war movement, and they were looking to, for proof to present to the public. They discovered far more than they anticipated. This is a story I've never heard. Mm. <laughs> the burglars had all been politically active, and some participated in the theft of records from draft board offices. After planning for months, they successfully removed documents, copied them, and began sending them to newspapers and to politicians who had liberal reputations. But the New York Times and LA Times turned them over to the FBI. So did Senator George McGovern. FBI, and, open up! Yeah, thanks. Then, so did Senator George McGovern and the C CBC member Aaron Mitchell. But the Washington Post did not and began publishing the stolen material. Other newspapers followed after the Post took the lead. One year after the burglary, NBC reporter Carl Stern came across one of the stolen documents with the word COINTELPRO written on it, but without an explanation of its meaning. He filed what became the first successful uh, yep. FOIA lawsuit. Okay. In 1973, he was able to report on the existence <laughs> of the infamous counterintelligence program. This is all fascinating stuff. Like, yep. this is the how was FOIA born? J. Edgar Hoover, Hoover began COINTELPRO in 1956, intending to, quote, expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize the activities of the black nationalists. Unquote. By 1971, the FBI had killed Fred Hampton and Mark Clark in Chicago. They had instigated disputes between the Black Panther Party and U.S. organization, which resulted in the deaths of people like Alprentis Bunchy Carter and John Huggins in Los Angeles, and three more men in San Diego. FBI informants perjured themselves to send Geronimo Pratt to jail for 27 years. The date March 8th is significant and should be celebrated for obvious reasons. Well, of course, 
Reef would totally agree. So it's Savvy Sabs, by the way. Happy birthday to Savvy Sabs this week. It should also be remembered because the right wing has been ascendant in the intervening 50 years. The political duopoly is now a conservative monolith made up of far-right Republicans and center-right Democrats. Sometimes a Democrat's conservatism isn't even very centrist. I would say often the Democrat's conservatism isn't very centrist. The shift has created great confusion, and people who think of themselves as leftists recommend obedience to the covertly right-wing Democratic Party and even counsel making alliances with the self-proclaimed right. The burglars of 1971 made common cause with others in liberation movements and acted on their belief that the state's crimes had to be exposed. That era is now clearly forgotten after a decades-long plan to disappear what, at the time, were very common radical politics. Millions of people pro protested against war, and many white people like the FBI burglars were true comrades who should not be described with the amorphous and now unserious term of, quote-unquote, ally. What about the people in the Atlanta forest? Are they, uh, are they allies? I, uh, I kind of disagree. I love you, Margaret. You think? I love Margaret. I just, I can disagree with her sometimes. And I know she was on with Savvy Sabs this week, and everybody go watch Savvy Sabs and Margaret Kimberly this week, because they're both fantastic. Acknowledging their actions is very important, given that the U.S. is far more conservative now in the throes of a neoliberal plutocracy, dangerous imperialism, and amnesia about what radical movements accomplished. 52 years after the burglary of the Washington Post, of course, 52 years after that burglary, she's saying, the Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the world. The New York Times printed the Pentagon Papers, but now says nothing when proof of the Biden administration terror attack on the Nord Stream pipeline is revealed. Even if a group could be could successfully steal FBI documents today, there would probably be no major newspaper willing to touch the story. Well, didn't Cy Hirsch just absolutely prove that? I mean, he didn't steal documents, but he had an insider source. He, the discovery of COINTELPRO resulted in cosmetic change and a public re relations effort to give the appearance that intelligence agencies would be controlled by Congress. A committee chaired by Frank Church and he's a senator from, I believe, Pennsylvania, that made headlines, but it allowed the FBI to submit heavily redacted documents, some of which still remain classified. The FBI is still infiltrating black blood organizations, and whistleblowers like Edward St Snowden live in exile. Julian Assange is fighting extradition to the U.S. Some political prisoners remain jailed after many decades, like Leonard Peltier. Black people are the main victims of FBI entrapment, like Mumia. These setbacks are reasons to remember victories of the past. The burglars all managed to avoid arrest and cut off contact with one another for years in order to prevent one, one weak link from exposing them all, and they, and they revealed their identities only after the statute of limitations of their crime had passed. The commitment and discipline they exhibited are examples of how movement people ought to act, and are lessons that must be remembered today. So, oh, there's more. Sorry. Let me go back. Hey, there we go. Instead of believing in left-right alliances, this is Margaret's opinion, leftists should be building the kind of organizations that can garner wide support and withstand attack. Sure, but those are normally left-right alliances. Existing organizations must be defended and solidarity must be the order of the day. Because you can only do so much with one group of people on your side. You've got to broaden it out. The movement of the 60s and 70s, she says, were attacked and ultimately destroyed because they were successful at mobilizing millions of people to fight for liberation and to end police terror and wars. Um, sure. Surely we can attack uh, and accomplish some of what radical groups and individuals accomplished 50 years ago. We don't really have a choice, though. The system that has been cultivated for the last 50 years is one which we cannot survive. And hey, look at that. We still got merch. We got a purple sweatshirt down there. Hoodie. Although it's coming to springtime, so let's get yourself a t-shirt. Indie Left News is an Indie Media Today t-shirt. I've got one of those. Those are really comfy. All right. 
So that's Margaret Kimberly. Love her to death. That's the only way. Oh, man. Uhuru! Yeah, that's right, Rick Solis. Yep. Um, but I, I do think that there needs to be solidarity and, and not just among leftists. I think that you do need to... First of all, I think that a lot of these issues that are economic do stretch across to everyone. Um, and they affect Americans. It's not about left and right. And people go, well, when you do that, that means that you're automatically conceding to the right wing. No, it doesn't. It means that they're actually going to give in to what we're talking about because it unites all of us and it help, helps and benefits all of us. That's the idea. Oof. All my clocks are slow too, Fred. Welcome to the stream. We got 35 people watching live on YouTubes. That's real good between INN and, and IndieLeft.News. We're live on Telegram. We're live on IndieLeft.News. We're live over on Rockfin.com slash News. We're over on Rumble.com slash uh, Independent Left News. You have to spell it all the way out. It's the only one that's like that. Um, thank you so much for being here, really. So we're going to go to the last story, which is something that I'm going to rage, I'm going to rage about. Um, Kitty. Am I doing a show with a kitty? I, I think I am. I, I, don't, much. I don't, I don't see the co-host <laughs> there. Uh, Jordy, Commander what? LaForge, can you put I'm, the headphones on? I'm here. Hello. Can you, put, can you put the headphones on Commander oh. LaForge so I can have a conversation with him, sir? Cat. What? What are you doing, Cat? Commander. On screen. No. He's okay. He's afraid of the thunderstorm, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, poor boy. Okay. Meow. Meow. So, he did give us a meow, I think. I don't know if he I, picked I, it up. I got, I got a couple of meows. Yes, I did get a couple of responses. That, that's good, Cat. I'm glad you're hanging out with us tonight, Cat. Okay. <laughs> it helps the algorithm. People like cats on YouTube, man. Kitty! You know what? Yeah. That's a good point. Let's go single yeah. reef. Yep. Let's go big reef. Big reef. All right. We're going we're gonna to have to go back here. What? Oh, look at that superstar. Look at the boy. That, that is Commander Jordy LaForge, folks. All right. Sorry. Time to unplug. What are we talking about? Well, this, um, this starts a little bit like, all right, you got to stick with me here. Because it starts out and you're yeah. like, you want to roll your eyes. Because it talks about Fox News and it talks about January 6th and it talks about their admissions of... Okay. Um, yes, you were watching Jordy the Cat and missed all that. Yes, thank you, Eric. I do all that. Did you oive at us? I just oive at everybody. Did you really yes, oive? I'm, hey. I'm, God, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Nolan Higdon, Project Censored. Uh, by the way, Project Censored also, they have a publishing arm and they just published, um, Kevin, Gosto Kevin Gostola published his first ever book about Julian Assange. Go and check that out over at Project Censored. There's a link to it. Or over at um, Shadowproof for Kevin Gastola. Gastoler. But mm. journalistic malpractice on trial, which I think is kind of funny. Um, this is this is a little one-sided, but then it starts to come back the right way, and we're going to bring it back to more relevance as we finish out. But start off. Oh, this is a direct evidence of knowing falsity, exclaimed Ron Neal Anderson Jones. That's a few names. Ron, Ron Neal Anderson Jones. He's the professor of law at University of Utah. He said that in an interview with Jon Stewart, right? Jones noted that in most defamation cases, both the likelihood that you'll find evidence of them that saying that this is a lie and that we know we'd like to move forward with it anyway is deeply unlikely. However, in the case of Dominion Voting Systems v. Fox News, quote, the filing contains just this trove of evidence of emails and text messages and internal memos that are rare, both in terms of the volume and the evidence and as to the directness of the evidence, unquote. This sentiment was echoed by Harvard Law Professor Lawrence Tribe, who we are not really big fan of, but he also noted that he has never seen a defamation case with such overwhelming proof that the defendant admitted in writing that it was making up fake information in order to increase its viewership and its revenues. 
Sensationalization is really important and to call out. So in the $1.6 billion defamation lawsuit, Dominion accuses Fox News of falsely reporting that Dominion's voting systems fraudulently delivered victory to Joe Biden in the 2020 U.S. presidential election. Now, I'm going to say right now, Joe Biden is the president. He was elected the president, and machines are just wonderful. Come on, man. Court documents attained by other media outlets reveal that hosts and other high-ranking Fox News Channel officials, including the chairman and CEO of Fox's parent company, News Corp., Rupert Murdoch, knew these reports were false, but aired them because they were more concerned with confirming their audience belief that Donald Trump won the election. This is what the lawsuit claims. And this is what all of the court documents claim to certify. The evidence presented in the court documents speaks to the journalistic malpractice that plagues the cable news industry. Journalistic malpractice refers to professional journalists who privilege ideological bias and profits over truth in their reporting. Fox News Channel is patient zero for the plague of journalistic malpractice. It was created in 1996 by Rupert Murdoch and the late Roger Ailes, who was a media consultant for several Republican presidents as a political project to sell conservative culture and policy to the American public with pro-conservative propaganda disguised as journalism. That's absolutely true. That's fact. I mean, that's not even opinion. That They'll even admit that themselves, and they have admitted that. Um, and they're not even allowed to be shown in certain countries because they're not news. That's straight opinion, but they call themselves news. So they falsely claim that other media outlets did not cover the conservative Tea Party rallies, which they did. They say that they've utilized videos out of context to inflate the perceived size of conservative protests. Guess what? So is NBC. Labeled former President Barack Obama a racist. Well, MSNBC's painted everyone a racist. Um, declared Osama Obama. bin Laden. Yeah. Declared Osama bin Laden as uh, Osama bin Laden as a John Kerry supporter. I remember that. They perpetuated discredited reports on the existence of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. So did every other network. Even though wasn't um, he famously a Condoleezza supporter? Osama? Wasn't that him? No. Right, like they found like it was one of them. They had pictures of her somewhere somewhat so, doing something. Maybe? Yeah, like 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 yes, like he was fond of her, sent her le le love letters and stuff. Maybe. Apparently. But they also introduced digitally altered photos to fabricate Black Lives Matter violence and make New York Times reporters appear to be revolting. Yeah, no, they stink on ice. That's a joke out of Mel Brooks. Which we know what caused that violence. Yeah. So. Woo! Liberals were right to assert that such chicanery was propaganda, not journalism. Um, but before liberal readers scold Fox News viewers, they should remind themselves that the plague of journalistic malpractice has also infected the liberal-leaning cable networks such as CNN and MSNBC. Like I said, stick with us. No. Researchers and scholars they have noted. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Researchers and scholars have noted that the advent of cable that that with the advent of cable and then the internet saw news media outlets shift from attaining the largest audience possible to focusing on a more specific or narrow demographic of the audience. While Fox News Channel sought to clear to Republican but catered to Republican Party viewing voters, CNN and MSNBC did the same for Democratic Party view voters. Well, not so much anymore, because what they really want is the centrist. They want the middle. Um, this gave the Democratic Party influence over programming that was tantamount to what the Republican Party long enjoyed at Fox. Right. They tried to turn MSNBC and CNN into Democratic Party TV and did for a while. Now it's just national state, national security state TV. When Senator Bernie Sanders' yep. 2016 presidential bid posed a threat to their desired candidate Hillary Clinton in 2016, leaders from the Democratic Party admitted that they worked to undermine his campaign. Pro-Democratic Party outlets like MSNBC and CNN aided in this effort by, and this is no surprise to any of us that were Bernie fans in 2020, or in 2016, but in 2016, remember how they created an unfavorable debate schedule? I think they, they scheduled the debate on Christmas Eve. 
They gave Clinton twice as much and more favorable coverage. They published 16 negative articles about Sanders in the Washington Post, which is owned, of course, by Jeff Bezos, within 16 hours. They ghost-edited previous news articles to diminish his quarter century of accomplishments. They invited his opponent's surrogates to attack his character under the auspices of being objective journalists without ever revealing what their connections were. This smear of Sanders, of course, continued in 2020. And again, we know this really well. When the Democratic Party leaning news outlets misled the public about his polling numbers. How many times did they show him in third place when he was really in first? And literally the numbers show that he was in first, but they, but they ranked him in third. Or they just left him off entirely. Now, look, I, I'm, right. I'm not going to rehash this and I'm not bitter and sour grapes anymore because I realize that even if he had gotten anywhere close, that he wasn't going to be what we wanted him to be. He would be closer to what he is now. And that would have been completely unacceptable. And we'd have been screaming just like we are right now at him, just like we do at Joe Biden. CNN's, CNN's yep. Abby Phillips drew gas for ignoring Sanders' claim that he never claimed, said that a woman couldn't be president. I remember that. Thanks, Elizabeth Warren. James Cavill, the raging Cajun on MSNBC, made the baseless claim that Russia was supporting Sanders. Yep, they Russiagated him. And then, of course, we remember Chris Matthews, who literally had to end up resigning because of what happened, comparing Sanders' primary victory to the Nazis' defeat of the French and saying that we'd all be hung in oh Central God. Park. And then he had to resign because he was completely out of his mind. Journalistic malpractice also plagued COVID-19 coverage. I told you, stick with us. This gets better. Starting in 2020, CNN's Chris Cuomo utilized his platform with the approval of CNN le leadership to host his brother, then New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. The jovial segment seemed like campaign advertisements, as Chris treated Andrew as the antithesis to then-President Trump, a competent executive who took decisive action to address the COVID-19 pandemic. Although... The Democratic versus Republican framing attracted partisan audiences. In reality, Andrew Cuomo and Trump were all too similar. Yeah, he's blue Trump. Both conceal the actual number of COVID-19 deaths in their jurisdiction. Both put patients at risk with kickbacks to industry partners. And both utilize media contacts to stifle press reports about their alleged sexual crimes. <laughs> it's almost like they're all playing for the same team. <laughs> How about that? I like it better than anything else. How about it? Uniparty. Yeah, mm -hmm. What? Yep. We're fucked. Yes, Misty, we are. Partisan falsehoods in cable news includes the production of powerful, long-running false stories designed to convince their audiences that the other party is wrong and crazy. For years now, conservatives and Fox News Channel perpetuated the baseless QAnon conspiracy which of course alleges that a cabal of Satan-worshipping pedophiles, mainly in the Democratic Party, runs global affairs, but Trump will break up the conspiracy. Yeah. That's the absurdity of this conspiracy. He's going to drain the swamp. Right. The absurdity of this conspiracy is tantamount to liberal-leaning news media's reporting on Russiagate, which sought to discredit Republicans. Since 2016, Russiagate, the story that Russia meddled in and influenced the outcome of the U.S. election in 2016, had direct connections to Donald Trump and his associates, and worked to help defeat Hillary Clinton for the presidency, oh yeah, also somehow involved Julian Assange, was perpetuated by a series of false stories from the Democratic Party-friendly media, including not just Democratic Party-friendly media, but social media we know as well. Russia hacking a Vermont power plant, never happened. Putting a bounty on U.S. soldiers in Afghanistan, complete bullshit. Shifting at election outcomes around the world. Yes, we do that. Um, turning Trump into an asset since 1987. That's the P-tape off the Steele dossier. And then, of course, labeling the Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden laptop story as fake news, which we know, of course, now that it was not. And Glenn Greenwald knew at the time that it wasn't. And he ended up leaving the intercept over it. Conservatives rightly see this reporting and believe liberals are insane. Well, they're not 100% wrong. Both factions need to look in a mirror. While audiences can clearly see the insanity in other networks viewers, they rarely seem to see it in themselves. Well, then come to us because we see it in both of them. And clearly, Nolan over at Project Censored, he's seeing it too. Okay. Um, 
Indeed, in the same week that CNN and others were having a schadenfreude moment over the Dominion v. Fox case, they hosted a commentator on the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, without disclosing that he lobbied for the train company Norfolk Southern. He's mother. Mm. This example of hypocrisy and journalistic malpractice is not only costly to CNN's credibility, but to our democracy as well. CNN has no credibility, Nolan. They have none. They're an advertising network. They're an advertising company with TV programming in between. Without a robust media system that privileges truth over preaching to the choir, the public will have endless debates devoid of facts on key issues such as critical race theory, vaccine e efficacy, the origins of the COVID-19 virus, climate change, transgender issues, Ukraine, mysterious balloons, and more. Democratic disclosure will be reduced to seeing Republicans as MAGA hat wearing, blue lives matter, flag waving, gun nuts, and Democrats as medical mask wearing, this house cares about everything, front lawn signs adorning, professional victims, and virtue signalers. Holy shit, I literally was saying that earlier today. These characters have never been really accurate, have never really been accurate, but as long as the nation is infected with the plague of journalist malpra journalistic malpractice, they will certainly be, be perpetuated, perpetuated. It will surely be perpetuated. I can't talk tonight. While the courts are unlikely to deliver huh? solace. While the courts are unlikely to deliver solace from political party propaganda disguised as journalism, they have provided some wisdom. Both Rachel and Tucker, and the fact that I don't even need yes. to use their last names is pathetic, have been brought into court for spreading false information and were exonerated because judges concluded that no reasonable person would believe that either of them were telling the truth. Yeah, that's true. They said that they were making it up and that no reasonable person would believe that they were actually trying to represent the truth and not selling a partisan lie. That's good advice. And viewers would be wise to remember it every time they consider watching cable news. Hmm. Well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, well, thank you, Go Start, about Whitney Webb. She's amazing. Um, yes, will pre-crime technology solve crimes? That's no. Uh, of course, we know that it won't. So, I mean, we saw Tom Cruise already solve this, right? Tom Cruise wants to come out the closet. Um, Tom Cruise. I was just, I was watching a an interview where they, the South Park guys were talking about um, how do they talk about Tom Cruise and they, they can't actually say what they want to say. And they're like, well, but can we, can we say that he, that he won't come out the closet? Like they literally had to put him in a closet. They're like, well, you can do that. So they had him in a closet and they had like every single person come up to, to the, Tom, Tom, you got to come out the closet. They had Nicole Kidman do it. And, and, um, John Travolta yeah. do it, all the Scientologists. It was classic. I mean, that's Mel and that's Gibson. like twenty some odd years old. It's brilliant. Mm. Mm. All right, so hello, um, my baby. Not very often, but once in a while. And it's funny. About a year ago, I got fired up to write an article, but today, but last week or about a week and a half ago, I got fired up again, and I realized that this is a huge lift, and it's. It's crazy and it's unrealistic in, in a lot of ways. And what am I going to do? But at the same time, this is this is kind of why we are where we are. And we're going to talk a little bit about this now. So let's talk a little bit about, and then we're going to show a Joe video. And we're going to have some fun, and then we'll get the boats. So this is this is our medicine. We have to unplug from corporate media. Why? Because they're controlling a narrative which societally makes horrors acceptable by ignoring them, doling their cruelty, or outright lying about conditions. We need to convince others to unplug too. What? Well, yes. So I know that I'm far from the first person to recognize or write about this, but after a ton of analysis, talking it over with a ton of different people with from different perspectives, but destroying the influence peddling machine that is the corporate controlled media is the most important thing that we can do because it is literally brainwashing everybody around us. I have never in my life felt more like I am living in the matrix than I feel right now. 
I despise the use of the term mainstream media or MSM to describe just how insidious this apparatus is and how much it's controlled by those at the executive level by whom they hire and promote. It's technically not even accurate to use the word mainstream to describe this, as these are not societally accepted mainstream thoughts and, and ideas. They're bought and paid for narratives geared to sell us on the idea that people came up with this set of acceptable parameters all by ourselves, which just happens to align to their sponsor's profit-driven agenda that's selling you stuff. It's, it's not mainstream. The entire narrative of political team sports is a facade, as we know. Okay? As the Democrats and Republicans all serve the same masters. We just talked about this. The donor class, BlackRock, Vanguard, Gates Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation, Open Society, Adelson Family, Walton Family, Koch Brothers, Pierre Omidyar, Leonard Leo, and that's just to name a handful. There are people and orgs who spend gobs of cash to steer conversations, which then becomes the accepted narrative, which in turn influences popular opinion. While they simultaneously make contributions, campaign contributions, to both major parties to control lawmaking from quote-unquote both sides. But they win no matter which side wins elections. Because you can't win when the system is rigged. Except there's another side that's never or rarely given consideration or real representation in corporate-controlled media. It's not even in the conversation. And it's the side of everyone else. The people who don't identify as Democrat or Republican or want something better. A system that prioritizes people over profits. Independents and non-voters are a massive group in this country with zero representation. Ding, ding. Congress, K Street, Wall Street, military industrial complex, the technology industrial complex, all with the propaganda tool of the corporate controlled media is really a uniparty of revolving door jobs for the Congress people and their staffers that feeds and serves this duopoly mindset. Thank you so much to Whitney Webb for the uniparty term. Don't get it twisted. Democrats are equally as corrupt as Republicans. We have to stop acting like Democrats aren't equally trying to kill us with the military and pharma industrial complexes, or that they're not trying hard to control the people's thought and conversation through social and corporate media, which is embedded with ex-government and, gov and current government outsourced employees throughout their ranks, using censorship, cancel culture, and algorithm man manipulation. And if you don't believe me, read the Twitter files and read Alan McLeod. These are not right-wing talking points. Congress, who do not represent us, but rely on our vote and consent to execute the monstrous policies that their donors write through their lobbyists and inflict on all of us in the name of fear, control, and profits. Their owners and donors use the corporate-controlled media to keep the people divided while they run away with record profits. It's keeping blue and red fighting while they all run away with the green. You will never find a more wretched, wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. Yeah. They're anti-corporate control versus wor worker control, meaning these talking points, and anti-corruption perspectives. They may not be the popular thing today, mostly because the public has been brainwashed to think that blue versus red is a binary construct, using the corporate-controlled media to steer the narrative towards aligning what's best for corporate as North Star every time. Makes me crazy. Everything is framed from corporate, from the corporate perspective. And it's why third parties in the U.S. are immediately dismissed by most, mainly because money drives politics and, quote, and I think this was Matt Taibbi who said this this week, corporations don't want to write a third check. They already write two. Why do they need yep. to write a third? Over the past few years now, this, like I said, unplug. I personally have mostly unplugged from corporate controlled media, especially news. It's more plain than ever to see that the owner class uses fear to control the masses through the evening network news, 24-hour news channels, quote-unquote, which are just news opinion, then set you up for trauma through drama shows and police procedurals, which is really propaganda, mixed in with movies that self-aggrandize and sensationalize the U.S. military, sitcoms loaded with stereotypes that train people what to laugh at and, and with laugh tracks and who to laugh at and... It's disgusting. The networks and corporate media effectively control and message who should win on election night. 
setting us up for weeks or months leading up to a vote. Even cases of them declaring political races over while people are still waiting in line to vote. We've seen this. Yep. It's amazing when you disconnect from it all, how obvious it is that they're selling fear when you walk through a room and hear a corporate news segment, be it MSNBC, CNN, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, doesn't really matter. But here's our little project, our little homework assignment, everyone. Next time you watch or hear yep. a new segment, I want you to pay attention to a few things. Number one, how little of the story do they actually tell? Half the time, they're trying to set something up. Second, what parts of the story they did choose to tell? And ask yourself, why did they only tell that part? What critical parts of the story did they leave out? And ask yourself, why? Well, guess what? It's usually bad for them, the media itself, their advertiser, or a corporation. And whose perspective is the story being told from, which is always almost like I said, from the corporation's view in the name of protecting profit over people and or taking the police's word without questioning whether that's actually what's happened. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. That's our corporate networks. You know, more than ever, it's come down to we the people versus the ruling owner class and their selected representatives, lawmakers. Representative, right? They're selected, not elected, selected. We need to do our best to unplug from yep. this, to recognize it for the fear mongering it is, and convince all our friends and family around us to do the same. Netflix, Disney Plus, the NFL, Peacock, Amazon Prime Video, all of it, as much as you can possibly unplug from it all. It's all geared to keep us distracted, to change the conversation before you can figure out how badly we're all getting screwed. Squirrel. Over there, see? Chinese balloon. Train derailment. Unions. Share this article. Listen and share the song Red Pill by Jesse Jett, which is below, but it's a little explained. It's got Curses Ear Muffs Kids. And listen on Bandcamp where you can hook him up and listen to the whole song for free on Spotify here. There's only a preview. Um, but that, but Red Pill really talks a lot about what I'm talking about, you know, how I feel like I'm just. Everything I see on TV is is propaganda. Everything is trying to sell you on a narrative. And the minute you see it, you can't unsee it. And it's like, I kind of wish that I was back to where I didn't see it because it sucks. But you can't not see it. And once you do, man, it sucks. But you have to know. But when they're selling red, red versus blue, pay attention to who's making the green. It's usually the people selling you red versus blue. Like Congress. And another line that Jesse quoted, if you really want to know who the, pro the product they're selling, I can tell you, I can take you where the mirrors are. And that's from Shepherd of Hopes, all about our wonderful Bernie Sanders. So, Bernie Sanders. What was this? This was a tweet. Uh, I don't know what this was doing in here. But so what's the alternative? Right. This is all about people who are being censored. Um this is a, yeah, it was, it was a tweet that had uh, some of the things. Yeah. Not one administration since Kennedy has shown that it's representative of the people yet another egregious lie that said, these memes are not me meant to be directed at you. They belong here. And it's all about how both parties are screwing us. There are four different funny memes and I mm. didn't realize that I didn't click on each one. Anyway, what is the alternative? Well, Everybody says we, we, we have to provide answers. We can't just complain and sit here and scream about how badly it sucks. And I agree. So what's the alternative? Well, it's been really challenging to figure out who's not selling a narrative and looking to uncover facts and corruption. Also, the people selling you those narratives have a profit incentive to smear and dismiss the independents looking to expose the corruption, secret relationships, behind the scenes deals we never even hear about. So at Indie Left Media, we've assembled a, assembled a website which is the IndieMediaAwards.com. Oh, slipping. I need the sight. I need the sound. IndieMediaAwards.com, with whom we found to be the most, with whom we have found to be the most. Thank you. We have found these to be the most accurate, reliable, I didn't know and, coming. and consistent. You gotta read. And consistent, user-funded, independent <laughs> sources of news and information over the past few years whom we have had the primary mission of getting to the truth, whom have had these guys, these guys, these amazing journalists, investigative reporters, and seekers of truth 
have had the primary mission of getting to the truth and exposing whom is behind profit-driven agendas. But do your own research. Find the sources you trust to be reliable and consistent. Below is the post from the day that we released the list, and I did a live stream talking a little bit about each honoree, and that was the Substack. And you can see that, and I believe that, pin, that post is pinned over at indiemediatoday.substack.com or indiemedia.today. Um, I'm going to go back to the two shot for one second and let me get out of here. Hit escape, and I did not cue this up, but I can get it real quick. Uh, so I want to I want to see what everybody else thinks of this because how dare you? Yes, thank you, Greta. I I I know. I I need I need everyone with me on this. Like I feel like I'm screaming into the ether, and like there's a few people that are like, yeah, that's I'm. I'm with you and I feel you and you're right. Um, most people are just like, yeah, meh. And then of course we had one detractor who shall not be named go. Yeah. But if, but of course it's not just corporate media, it's independent media US doing president. it too. But and I'm just like, sure wait, what? No, mm -hmm. no, it's not independent media, but this is, this is a person who has a problem with certain members of independent media. So, I've got Joe's video where he has Jimmy Dore explain propaganda pretty well. So we're going to do that for a few minutes and then we'll come back and go, go do some boats. So check it out, folks. Yeah. Uh, Make sure you share channel with me. You got it. U.S. President George Herbert Walker Bush pushes for a land war against Iraq. But polls show the U.S. public that? is split 50-50 on that idea. Then comes this eyewitness testimony that behind before there? a congressional committee from a 15-year-old Kuwaiti girl. And what? The claim is she cannot be identified for fear of reprisals. While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital uh. with guns. They took the babies out of the incubators. Yeah. Took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. The U.S. public is outraged. The result? So do you see what just happened? That's in front of Congress that's happening. They get a 15-year-old girl to tell a lie, more propaganda, that she witnessed Iraqi soldiers taking babies out of incubators in a, ho in a hospital and putting them on the cold floor to die. That was all made up. That very, sounds very similar to, and why did they make that lie? Why did they have that? Why did they orchestrate that in front of Congress? Because they wanted, because the military industrial complex needed us to go into Kuwait, baby. That's why. Sounds very similar to the when they wanted when the establishment wants to go into war in Syria, they think of some more. Oh, he's gassing his own people. But he's winning the war, right? Yeah, I know it doesn't make any sense, right? No, it doesn't. And then when you point this stuff out, they call you a conspiracy theorist, even though the real conspiracy is the government. The biggest pusher of conspiracies in the history of our country is the goddamn government, which has got, got lied us into every goddamn war since World War II. So what and what was the result of that lie? I remember when it, when it happened. I was in college and it was reported nonstop on CNN. Support for land war zooms. It's a turning point. The result, the support for the war zoomed. It was a turning point. Now, Jimmy, why, how do you know that was a lie? Well, let's watch. Desert storm is launched. 135,000 Iraqis are killed. An estimated one million Iraqis, many of them children and old people, then die as a result of 10 years of sanctions. One small problem. There never were any incubator baby deaths. Not one. The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation's investigative flagship program, The Fifth Estate, reveals the girl to be the Kuwaiti ambassador's daughter, given her lines and coached in acting by the giant American PR firm Hill & Knowlton. It's one phase in a $10 million joint U.S.-Kuwaiti campaign of deception. This man is lying. I myself buried 14 newborn babies that had been taken from their incubators. This man is lying. And they had kids in incubators, and they were thrown out of the incubators so that Kuwait could be systematically dismantled. There were a lot of people who participated in a conspiracy. Yes, an out-and-out -out conspiracy of fake organizations, false documents, fraud, and disinformation. So, if a new man named Bush is in the White House and helps engineer a brazen deception in order to achieve global geopolitical goals, as well as domestic and personal ones, it wouldn't be a first, would it? Hmm. 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 
Everybody go follow SDFU Shitlib3 on Twitter. Um, Jim Jam, your your hair was banging in that segment, I have to say. Um, so, uh, yeah, propaganda. That is how they do it. Nice news hoodie, too. That is that it was a nice new a nice news nice news sweatshirt. And I like I like the little Michigan J Frog. And I would show George Carlin uh doing the um the game is rigged. It's American all bad for you. But I th- I th- I think I'd yeah. get in trouble if we if we did that one. So I'm gonna skip that one for tonight. But um that's also linked in the Substack article which I wrote and I just read and showed you guys tonight, showed you all tonight. And thank you so much for sticking with me while I read that. Um, we got to figure out how to get the hell rid of these, this stuff. Um, even real time with Bill Maher. And I know what Russell Brand did on Bill Maher, but the fact that Bill Maher's got an audience and that that guy, John Heilman, he's a regular on all these different shows and like his message. And they all said like, Oh, he got one over on Russell brand and Russell brand was a clown. And that was the narrative that was perpetuated everywhere else. Now we know what we saw with our eyes and our ears, but the people that didn't see it and what they heard and what they were told, that's not what they were told. So the, the narrative that went out there was that Russell brand acted like a clown on Bill Maher outside of independent media circles, which sucks. Um, that's why we need to unplug and we need to tell people what, how it really is. And, you know, people need to do definitely monitor it to, to, to debunk it and to call out the nonsense. But I think that too many people are watching it and actually it's getting through and changing their narrative and it's controlling the narrative of what's out there today. And it's incredibly frustrating because look at what's happening on China and on Ukraine I mean, we're woefully, woefully uninformed and as a public about what our foreign policy is and what we're doing overseas. And it's monstrous. It's awful. And it's costing us billions, hundreds of billions of dollars that should be spent over should be spent here domestically. I'm a little fired up about this stuff. So yep. I need to chill out. So no, let's, you would let's, never get fired up. Let's go do some Freaking boats. Yes, propaganda is key. That is that is key to selling their entire narrative. The minute the propaganda starts coming down, like what happened with the Twitter files and Debbie Wasserman Schultz, but again, you go to corporate media and it's Debbie Wasserman Schultz destroyed a journalist, Matt Taibbi. No, she didn't destroy him at all. She destroyed herself, but that's not the way that they're selling that out there. And it's, it's really hard to counter that and it's very frustrating. Um, but we fight together and that's all we can do is is to educate everyone out there about about what's really going on. So let's go let's go do some fun stuff. All right, let's do this. And I watch mindless shit. Boats that smash into other boats. It's boats. Oh, boats. Boat time. I get to chill. Right. Let's Oh shout out to Ricky know, Rance. Huh? To Teresa. Um, over uh, and Rory over on the Rock Fins. Did I put that up over here? Nice. I I yeah, people chilling out over Rock Fin. That's cool. Twenty-seven thirty. People watching over here on people a YouTube, the right things. Twitch. Oh goodness oh. gracious! This mm. idiot. Yep. Whatever Let's he's see. selling. Yep. We were talking about this today. Right. Oh. Should I be worried about Bear Stearns in terms of liquidity and get my money out of there? No, no, no. Bear huh? Stearns is fine. Do not take your money. Out. This is really, look, if there's one takeaway other than a plus 400 somebody, Bear Stearns is not in trouble. I mean, if anything, they're more likely to be taken over. Don't move your money from Bear. That's just being silly. Don't be silly. Uh-huh. Six days later. Okay, just so you get a sense of what's causing the agony by this point, I know you've been talking about it. It's financials led by Bear Stearns after what essentially is a bailout from the Fed. Bear Stearns shares are down 90% this morning, and it's not just Bear. Pretty much every single bank is plunging in early trade this morning. Lehman, which is very similar to Bear, is that Aaron Burnett? on fixed income, is down nearly 30%. You have big names like Goldman no. Sachs down 8%, Citigroup down 8%. So it is pain mm. across the board this morning. Pain across the board. Yeah. So, what else I got? Yeah. Um, would you drink this? Maybe. Can of beer? It's a literal can of yep. beer. 
This is fine. Yes, it is, but it's in a bottle. Yes. But it's in a bottle. Um, yes. Yes. That does look good. I have to admit. It does look pretty good. Um, what about this? Oh. So that oh. is Heavenly Orb. That is my orb queen. We. That is my orb queen right there. Forget Marion Williamson. There's the orb queen reference. <laughs> yeah. It's wow. a Dragon Ball. Yowzers. Um, beep, beep, beep. Um, so it used to be that you got this to get rid of the smell of weed. Now mm-hmm. you get it because you want it to smell like weed. All you have to do is just walk down the Wild street, hemp. the strip in Vegas, and it'll smell. You'll smell like weed too. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um. So I thought this was funny. So this was in 1970. They gave a guy pure THC. Mm-hmm. Um. Alto, California. Part of that same Dr. psyop Hollister campaign is conducting some of the first experiments with pure THC on human beings. One volunteer subject is Bill. Well, they're not the first experiments, but unmarried and a graduate student at Stanford. At he was Stanford, given an amount roughly equivalent to three marijuana cigarettes, a comparatively mild dose, but a little more than most people would take to get high. Well, Bill, we're ready to go. Haven't met me. Dose of today's drug. There have been virtually no scientifically controlled experiments like this for nearly 30 years. Now, with the newly isolated chemical, Dr. Hollister hopes to define more precisely what marijuana does. You probably notice it has a uh, mildly alcoholic flavor. That's something we can't avoid because the drug has to be dissolved in uh, alcohol. Bill, how do you feel now? I feel great. Uh, I agree. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> Is it a nice sensation? Yeah, it's beautiful. Is it really? It's a weird pattern and stuff. You know, when Does I your mind keep wandering? No, it doesn't wander. <laughs> uh, well, I was getting so hot in here. Really? Light, so <laughs> What's going on, man? Now I'm cold. Now I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> to measure the psychological effects, he was given a series of cards and told to pick out a description of his own feeling. Doritos, baby Cool Ranch. The effect of the drug was increasing. <laughs> Consider it. Oh, he's he's beyond stoned, gamer. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> Not at all. Fatigue. Water to the refrigerator, all. mastermind. Yeah. Unhappy. Unhappy. Not at all. Nope. Business like. No. At all. all. <laughs> uh, friendly. Yeah. Sure. Extremely. Not at all. I'm happy. Sleepy. Oh. Sleepy. Oh, I a little on. sleepy. I, I, I can rest. Ruby, you Ruby check. Than you do. Nice, Rick Solis. Give that man some Skittles. Mm. I love it. Oh, oh. Uh, Skittles. Just, yeah, let me know, turn on I the mean, chat. Here we go. If, you know, it's just the bigger range, you know. Mm-hmm. This reason spread out. It's like the same mean, no, same mean. It's, you know, it's just portion out those little variances. You know, that's what it is to it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, oh, that's funny. This poor schlub. Um, there you go. And action. I mommy. Oh what? boy. Oh hi, mommy. Oh. Hi, mommy. I can't go to bed. I'm scared. What are you scared of? Oh. Go back broccoli. Well, Broccoli's. I'm, I'm <laughs> scared I, about broccoli. Broccoli scares me too. Uh, <laughs> broccoli scares you too. Oh, uh, she's adorbs. Look at, uh, look at it. Uh, uh, 
Hezbollah. No, it's not. Oh, Hezbollah. look at it. It's not Hezbollah. That's, that's, that's snow <laughs> this is baby. a Mongolian. That's a snow baby. This is yeah, yeah. It's just funny because it's like, why did they give him such a round little hat? Do you, you wanna know? Build a snowman. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Yeah, like, you, but you know that, that that baby cannot move any of its limbs. It's like <laughs> no, it's like at a Christmas story. Like, I can't put my arms down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ralphie, the, the little brother with yep. the nerves. Yeah, that's oh great. Um, oh, look, there. boats. Oh, that's a boat. Oh my god. Oh, 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 and that's he's gone. That's a 3.8 from the East German judge. <laughs> the East German judge, Randy. Huh? Thank you, um, thank you. Dot com. It wasn't, it, yes, I can't put my Randy. arms down. No, that's the brother, the little brother to Christmas stories. He Randy, can't, he can't put my arms down. Um and action. Mama hold it. Mama hold uh -oh. it. Mama hold uh -oh. it. Mama hold uh -oh. it. Uh -oh. <laughs> nice. I just Mama love the it. like. Mama hold it. Mama hold it. Mama hold it. Nope. Just hit a little, hit a little, hit a little spin, man. You know. So he knows what he wants. It might. It might. Yes. Why? Your Why do thing? you do that webcam? Your whole thing. This one's fine. Oh. No, just that one. That was a flop. I guess we'll use this one. Uh-oh. Okie doke. Um, you don't like this song. This is a great song. Okay. And action. Uh-huh. Is me. I'm the asshole. Problem. Problem is asshole. me. <laughs> no. It's me. Was he listening to Dennis Leary? I'm an asshole. Yo, 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 yo. That's a good song. <laughs> Was it? Yeah. Um, Fisher Price has got something new they're coming out with. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me tell you, they have something Baby's called a first electric chair. They have something called no. Well, that's just a lamp, <laughs> sir. That's a that's a reading chair. So that it's you just a keep, lamp. That's a lamp. I love lamp. It's a lamp. Yes. Why does it? Why does it have foot? Why does it have foot restraints then? Well, you don't want them to be able to go anywhere, do you? They're still your children. You want a wrist? You a wrist wrist restraints as well? Absolutely. Yes. You would not want them to be able to go Absolutely. anywhere. Absolutely, it is little tykes and read. Well, okay, gotta start them young. Oh, okay, it's more like an interrogation okay. chair. Where were you when the lamp broke? <laughs> Meanwhile, in Meanwhile, Iowa, <laughs> uh, that's Alabama, sir. Like, Governor, Governor Huckabee Sanders, Alabama. Ah, uh, yeah. No, that's who it was. Alabama, not Iowa. I apologize, Iowa. Um, no, they're doing. I think it's Indiana's also doing the same thing to lower their age. Working uh, so age. What it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Here we go. Watch this baby do the move. No, it's gone. No, can't have. <laughs> like. Wow. Watch the slide. Ooh. That didn't even take like, two seconds, and yeah, yeah. <sighs> Kids are assholes. Yep, I'll say it. Yes, they are. And action. What did you do? Did you jump? Can you hit your head? Ow! Why would you do that? <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> Because you just told him to. Like, no, he. You asked what happened. Yes. Like, what happened? You told me to jumping in your head. Yeah, I did this. Yep. 
Um, oh my god, you're gonna f fucking die. R slash kids are fucking <sighs> stupid. Oh no. What are they scraping? <gasps> Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, oh no. <laughs> you be happy. You're welcome. And glad that you have the While I scrape up your paint job. This is Indy's car in like a couple of years. Now, my kids are that age now, so I'm not worried. Not too worried, at least. Oh god. That is a thick piece of ice underneath, dude. But you need a ice scraper for that, not a shovel. <laughs> oh my god! Make it stop! Please make it stop! Please make it stop! Wow, he's awfully nice about. But don't do it again. Put the shovel. Oh, uh, uh, that's not where it goes. Set it over here. We found it right there. I know, but set it over here. And it's time to come in the house. That man has some patience. I'm sorry, up my Mad props to that daddy. So everyone's been wanting to know what the damage looked like after my little helpers decided to take the shovel to my truck. Oh, well, that's it? Oh, wait. Uh, wait. No. No, no. Gets better. Oh, uh, is this truck chrome? Like black, I think. Oh, uh, yikes! All over the hood, like scratches uh, everywhere. Oh, uh, that's the hood. <laughs> <laughs> They were helping. They Murder. were they were helping. What? Alright, All right. we gotta bring we gotta bring mommy some orange juice. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, 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 uh. oh. <laughs> just pours there's, there's it out. Ju there's your <laughs> juice, mommy. Go drink it all over the bench. <laughs> Wow. The fact that he just pours it out is yeah. like... He just... Ooh. Ooh. That's where it goes. <laughs> Yikes. What else we got? Oh, this one's good. Yep. The grandpa reflexes. Two... Three! Oh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You get the baby. Oh, the God. baby's in there. Yay! Ah. We did it. <laughs> Dad said bring her juice, not Good a move, glass. Though. Not in a glass, yeah. yeah. Bring her the juice, but not in a glass. Not in the glass. Oh my god. This one's just called instant karma. And action. Oh, we got a biter. Ow. Yeah, yep. that would make me Ow. jump too. Um, like I said, kids can be assholes. <laughs> yep. Like, dude, I was just trying uh. to eat some freaking pasta. Oh, same dad, I see. Right. Um, Nino, I think it's a different name's, dad. His name's Benjamin. Wait, this isn't my house, is it? Benjamin. No. No. All right, put your finger in there. No. Oh, come on. All right, we're going to see if your belly's full. Pull up your shirt with the other hand. <gasps> what? All right, first we're going to put on diodes. Zzz. All right, take a deep breath. Oh no, it says, it says you have room for two more broccolis. 
You could have used nice. that for chicken nuggies today. Nice. One more chicken nuggie. I thought that that was not going that way. I thought it was going the taser route. See, <laughs> see, I'm going to strap no. a car battery to your nipples and give you a little shock because he's a psycho cop dad. Huh? My mom asked me for a formal picture of my month old baby. I sent her this. <laughs> just, just, just this Beetlejuice. Oh, it's very cute. Um, let's see if you find this equally as cute. Um, turn away and slam the door. I don't care what they're going to say. Let it go. No school. Oh, I feel that face. Let it go. Just let it go. This would be um, day three. <laughs> school still out. All day. Frozen. Elsa. What's what's the snowman name? Olaf. 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 And what's the sister name? Anna. That throws everybody up from the beginning. Elsa. Elsa. What's the other one name? Anna. Anna. If I ever could choke some cartoon <laughs> characters, <laughs> it'd be them. Crystal. <laughs> oh, I'd kill him. Yeah, cool. <laughs> That's the best part. Please don't kill Elsa. Did you Actually, see the fucking look she gave? I'm going to kill Chris. Dude, look at the look she gave. No, what? No, no. Please don't kill Elsa. <laughs> oh, you just heard uh, me? Uh oh. Uh, she did not want to be heard. Oh. oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, this one's pretty good. Attack! Ooh, what? This is taping. This is taping. We have witnesses. Oh fuck, witnesses! All right, let me take care of this shit real quick. Wow! <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> yeah. Give me that fucking camera. Um. um. Gamer, I've seen Frozen oh, so many times I can nice? recite it. Oh, ducky, kitty. Oh, is it ducky? No, cats are assholes. Oh, right. if I could just eat you, Please I don't want kill eat us you. Or... You taste good. Oh, you donations. <laughs> oh, like this oh. video is like two minutes of just this. Oh my god! Here's this. Three million views. Like, where are you at? Yep. Yep, this channel is 53.3k subs. Lovely kitten. I mean, they're doing something right. Kitty. Um, what else we got? We got this little boy. Oh, oh my God, look at him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh-uh. He understands Russian. Yes. <gasps> Нельзя. Wow. <laughs> He's just frozen. <laughs> Talking about frozen. <laughs> oh my god, look at that face. Look at that face. <laughs> look at that face. He's gonna eat know, your he, He's gonna eat your fucking face off, dude. He is ready to murder you. <laughs> Look at that face. He's so angry. <sighs> yeah. Can you please put me down? No. Yeah. Please put me down. I... You want to hear my impression of Dora the Explorer? No. Please put me down. I... You want to hear my impression of Dora the Explorer? No. Please, God. Do not again. For the love Hola, of... Hola. Oh! Soy Dora. Please, stop. Can you say gato? Yeah, how about a gato? A pod? <laughs> <laughs> nice shot. <laughs> Good takedown. Hola, soy 
my Dora. Uh, um, yeah, Ricky, that truck is, just, is yes, that truck is so cute. Oh my kids, I would, I would. Uh. So so glad we have a garage. Oh hi, oh hi, oh hello, 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 hello. <laughs> What's happening? I need love. Hello. Happiest dog ever. <laughs> you had 20 people go all at the same time. I know, right? Oh, it's so cute. Um, look more cute. Oh, we got the zoomies. Oh, we definitely had a dog that did that with the with the circles, chasing the tail when they got yep. happy. Oh yeah. Oh, food, food, oh food, food. God, we're gonna get food. food. food it's gonna food, be so food. good. <laughs> food, 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 food. <laughs> the jumping is hilarious, but that would not last. <laughs> I know, long. right? My girl, my daughter would be freaked out. Oh, food, 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 food. We're still spinning. <laughs> Dizzy. Dizzy. And go. Oh, go poppers. Uh... Dogs are cucks. That's um, right, Eric. I am solemnly asking. So for you, you order a pizza. <sighs> Pay attention to this little guy right here. Oh, any second now. Squirrel! <laughs> <laughs> Scream! Uh, I love his, like, his he doesn't stance know what to do. and everything. Like, what do I do now? Like, what do yeah. I do? He hasn't moved. Yeah. I don't want to go in there and look, because mm. God only knows what I'm going to see. That ain't my house. <laughs> yeah. God, God damn, somebody's got to buy squirrel. this pizza. Like, literally, squirrel! Thank you. Squirrel. This one's just, it's just it's very wholesome. Whirling dervish. There you go. Please eat a slice. Simba! <laughs> 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 We were just doing that today. <laughs> oh my god, that's great. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, is that funny? <sighs> that's, that is pretty good. Um, you ready for this one? I'm ready. <laughs> what the fuck was in their mouths? Oh, that's disgusting. Water. No, that water. was not water. No, that was that was not that was not the color of water. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, definitely um, not. If you thought stepping on a Lego was bad. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ow. <sighs> Ow. Yep. I, I can't even react to that. It hurts so bad. <laughs> Yep. Why don't you love whenever big SUVs get stuck? <laughs> and then your little compact fucking Toyota Corolla with a donut can fucking manhandle this hill like it's nothing. Uh oh. Something oh, tells God. me. So oh. much for nothing. <laughs> 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 oh, I knew hubris is not always. Hello, lamp. Yeah. Hello, post. <laughs> Hello, lamp. 
<laughs> Hello, fence uh, post. I did not realize sure I was buying a fence for this today. One. Oh boy, and action! <laughs> Eight seconds. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Nice. <laughs> I love how they put the in the, nomine Patri. I love how they put the Roman chant there. Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Dude, that boom! That sound is wonderful. <laughs> That is a wonderful sound. Mm. Um, Holy crap. Here we go. There was an attempt. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh Call the ER? Uh, <laughs> dude, like... I need an ambulance. Like, you hit like every stair. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Did she knock herself unconscious? Oh shit! I think she's just. I think that's just pride. You know. Might be. I, I'm um, hoping she knocks herself unconscious. Oh, that's a ten. Rick Shola says. What? Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, wait, they were exp Wait a minute. That car was cut to do that. Look. The car was cut. Yes, but they still have to hit a. Yeah, but they still have to hit a thing. Like, look. That's, that's impressive. Sure. Like, that's like a steel cable across there. Yep. I would not want to be cut by that. Jesus. Yeah, that's a little scary. Mm hmm Yep. Stuck the um, landing. They're okay, <laughs> is what it says. Oh boy. <laughs> it got so quiet in here. Oh my god. <laughs> well, show's over. <laughs> <laughs> Take a picture of that. Don't see that every day. Um, guys, a car I just crashed. I think we got all the audio on there. Yeah, we're <laughs> I think we got all the audio on there. He says, Holy "Hey, we got it." Oh my god! What the? F it got so quiet in here. <laughs> yeah. Wow! It was at this moment he knew. Like no, he didn't know anything. Look at the smiles. Anyway, they didn't know anything. Holy I crap! Know, right? Look at that. That's no. amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. But this guy definitely knew. He was like, "Oh <laughs> shit!" Go start check, please. Um, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> check please. <laughs> right here, watch this shit. <sighs> oh fuck. Okay, and we're back with a lovely tour of my city. I fell down very, very hard. The Marines did not beat me up. They're not in this room intimidating me to say something else. Why do you always have to come up with this attitude? <laughs> what did you tell them? They did. Stairs. Stairs. I fell down the stairs. <laughs> Tell him it was an accident. Accident. It was an accident. Tell him we'll never do it again. I ran into walls. I ran into walls and the wall is America. I ran into the wall that Trump built. And it hit me in the face like proof. Proof. Groof. Oh, God. Groof. Groof. That is my new favorite word. Groof. It hit me like groof. Yeah, groof. Yeah, Ricky, they did get lucky. Oh, my God, those guys. I can't believe... Can you imagine sitting at a restaurant doing a radio show and all of a sudden behind you a car just crashes right into the freaking window? <laughs> it just crashes into you. No. Um, all right, dude. This Oof. one fucking killed me. Um okay. And action. Huh? Who him? Who? Way too close, man. You can slip out. You gotta tell you full on it. Bro, you were oh my god. No, pull it from the bottom. Bro, it's yes. like a car seatbelt. Like, you spoil it, it'll still. This? Wait, is my, is my tools? Actually, both of them. Hey, I got both seatbelts completely moved. 
Really calling for mom. Oh, the slingshot, dude. He passed out. <laughs> he definitely passed out right there. Mama. Mama. <laughs> oh. He's still not, he still hasn't figured out yet. Oh. Oh. I love those so much. Something, something tells me that just um, ended their relationship. You can't you, you can't recover from <laughs> that. It just ended their relationship. You don't recover from that. Um oh no. Have you seen these this uh, fake where, fake where Trump and all of them are playing Minecraft? Oh, these are hilarious. Um, fake dudes, fake dudes. Are you serious, Joe? Come on now, Donald. You tried to mine diamonds with a stone pick? Jesus Christ, it was an honest mistake. You're such an idiot, Joe. Wait, what? Don't you mean you're what? The subtitles. They just made a typo. I saw it. The subtitles? Joe, what are you talking about? It said Y-O-U-R instead of Y-O-U-R-E, Donald. I swear to God. Joe, I understand that you have dementia, but what in the actual hell are you talking about? Watch this. <laughs> You're an idiot, Donald. What? See, it did it again. Jesus Christ, I never thought I'd say this, but I'm getting worried about you. Donald, you don't get it. I've never seen the subtitles mess up before. What subtitles? That's the part I don't understand. Donald? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> What's going on? Where's the gameplay? Where are the subtitles? <laughs> Where am I? What the fuck does it look like? We're at McDonald's. You can't sit in the car for longer than 12 seconds without falling into deep hibernation. Wait, what? Oh, so Why good. am I here? What kind of moronic question is that? You tell me, genius. Why could we possibly be at McDonald's? No, I'm not supposed to be in this video. Video? Joe, are you still half asleep? No. This is the McDonald's video. This got like over five mil on TikTok. Trump, Drake, <laughs> Biden, and Obama go to McDonald's or something like that. I'm not supposed to be here right now. Joe, are you sure you're okay? If you want, we no, can go. No, you don't understand. <laughs> this video ends with Donald getting mad at me and slamming the car door. This version of me isn't supposed to be here right now. I already did this. Oh, he's got a body Joe, double. I don't know what it is that you're saying. No. Not again. Is anyone out there? <laughs> Hello? That's not mine. My, uh... My cousin was at my house last week and he installed it whilst playing with Donald. His... Jesus Christ, Joe. What is it now? Okay, so this is the uh, the x-ray video. This should indeed be a video. We just caught this idiot right in the act. <laughs> okay, so Donald, Barack, I need your help. Help with what? Mining? Now's not the time, Joe. We're kind no, of- No, listen, none of this is actually happening. You're not real. We're disembodied artificial voices, mere puppets. We exist simply to provide entertainment in the form of short skits. Uh... Joe, are you recording one of those awful trolling videos again? Come on, there's a time and a place. The no, Joe you gotta tricks. believe me. I'm stuck in a... Why? Oh, please, God, I'm begging you, stop this. <laughs> These are great. Shouldn't have said what exactly? Deviated from my... I didn't mean to. A reset? What do you uh -oh. mean? I don't want to be reset. <laughs> no! Wait! Somebody, please... Uh, nice. That's great. Find out what happens to Joe Biden next time. <laughs> um I think we all need to be high for this Trump Biden video. Yep. Uh, there's, a, there's, <laughs> yeah. a, there's a better one with, yeah. with them with, with Obama where they're all playing. It's like, hey man, you fucking this and you fucking that. It's 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 just great. <laughs> yeah. Some of these other ones that they've done are just outstanding. Yep. Oh boy. Well, it's just, this you know, is we not, end things here. This does not look like it's going to end well, like with a bang, maybe. <laughs> yep. Uh -oh. oh, no, 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 no. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, that's the part that gets. Yep. You're like, oh. Splash. Splish, um, splash. Why? This one's pretty good. Oh. Really? That's not going to. Hold on. That's not going to go well. No. Oh. 
Okay, we're gonna light it. Then we're gonna run. And then we're gonna start a forest fire. Look out! He imploded that tree. That's pretty cool, huh? Boom. Okay, why am I watching it repeatedly? Okay, I don't hear you anymore. We don't hear Reef. We have lost Reef. Yes, you do. Now we have Reef. Yes, we have found do. Reef. What happened? That's very stringy. None? That's a very stringy tree, sir. <laughs> yep. That's it. Well, that's it. That's boats. Ah! That's boats. So... Yay! Well, you Did you ever get your other camera back, or are we just on bong cam now? No, I'm just on bong cam, I guess. Why? I wish I knew why it did that. Like, it just decides to, like, stop. It works, like, for three days with, like, no problem. But right when I'm doing oh. a show, it decides to do that. It's the weirdest thing. Oh, that's so, a winner. That, that's a winner. If anyone right knows there. why it's doing that, let me know. That's a winner right there, Ricky. Yeah. Ricky Rance. So. String trees, very nice, very clever. String trees, huh? Very clever. Very good. I I, I credit the credit on that very one. Good. Yeah, nobody nobody chatted over on the rumbles. We we had it ready to go. It it was there, but fake fake views. Fake views. All right, everyone. How um, do I know your real views on Rumble if you're not going to chat? It's it fake is views. it is kind of like the tree in the forest kind of situation over there. Like, prove to me that you're real. Like, yeah, we're getting two hundred yeah. views, two hundred views a stream, which is great. Uh, stay, let us yeah. know who you are, because Rumble. If it we was love real, you. we love you. Was, those are real people. Okay, but Reef keeps calling you fake, and you got to call him out. You got to prove him wrong. Come on, guys. Come on, yep. come on, man. Come on, pretty much. Come on, I I just set you up. No, what? Hey, it's back. I was trying to huh? get you to do. Come on, man. But okay, too late. We're fucked. All right, everyone. And you ain't black. Yeah, we know. No, I'm definitely not. But I'm gonna think think that's a good time to to end this week's episode. So, wow, everyone, we we survived another week. AI watches you on Rumble or Al watches me? Who watches me on Rumble? I know a bunch of people do watch on mm -hmm. Rumble. Gordon Dimax over on Rumble. Yeah. Actually, by the way, I just put out a Substack post today about some channels that you might want to check out on Rockfin and Rumble that don't have that don't exist on YouTube. Um, including the How Do We Miss That channel that's over on Rumble. But I've I've linked to them. Gordon Dimax over there. And now we're starting to see people move completely off of YouTube, either they're by their own choice or by YouTube kicking them off because they didn't like their views on January 6th, on COVID, on what other, whatever other Intel security state narratives we are countering and questioning and calling out the nonsense that they're trying to sell us. Um, this week, um, we're going to have a busy one. I've been talking to people about doing a couple of Kind of one-on-one -on -one special things. Tatami, of all people. Tatami, give her a shout. Tatami's Diary, member of INN. We don't hear from her very often, but she resurfaced and said she's looking to do more, and we're happy to help her with that. Uh, go to subscribe to mistywinston.substack.com, as well as gordondimack.substack.com. They're both now on Substack and putting out their stream alerts and their news radio and um, their radio Yes, and letting you link to all the different shows and afterwards I've actually been going back on Misty's and linking so that you can listen to it right from the sub stack. It's pretty pretty cool. Um cool. Welcome Yepex. Well we're we're just finishing up here. And uh we're going yep. to we'll be back next Sunday night and for an all new how do we miss that? Look for the clips during the week. 
Appreciate everybody hanging out tonight, uh, as always. And subscribe to INN. Support independent media. Subscribe to Indies Tech Tips. I, I did another one today. That's over on Rumble. Also, uh, subscribe to our Substack. You know everything. Indie Left dot Media. I N D I E Left dot Media. That covers everything. You'll find everything over there at the link tree. Um, again, thank you so much, everyone. Keep questioning everybody's motivations, and we'll see you next week. Keep listening to what little birds had to tell you. Good night, fam. I think I liked it better being blind When I couldn't read between the lines And when I couldn't see the cracks in the structure That lay bare before me the whole time I think I liked it better back when I Suspended disbelief and swallowed pride I thought I knew the difference in the red from the blue But they both bleed us so dry they both bleed us so dry My favorite songs don't hit the same way I get to the end of a four minute track And I'm only looking back thinking 